you know how great it is to do a show with two fucking virgins that I don't have to worry about you guys ever getting me to. You good ever. money, yo. Yes. You good money, yo. That's the only way Indians don't rape if they just don't fuck. They're just like... Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is how I avoid it. I just get married. <laughs> then I think it's good. I'm the exception that proves the rule. <laughs> exactly. Al's the only one I got to worry about, but he's not on camera. Take that, <laughs> industry. <laughs> we planned it. Hey, you know what hey, else? Hey, hey, we didn't plan <laughs> nothing, right? <laughs> We're ready for the mob. Hey, hey, New York is in the building. <laughs> New York is in the building. We taking the comedy scene back, yo. <laughs> it's, if you all don't know what we're talking about, man, everybody's... Um and why? Canceled. Not yet. <laughs> we got patience, unlike you fucking animals. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, just to fill everybody up, um, obviously, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're the chosen one, they just be coming out when you don't want to. <laughs> I hope you're not the chosen one. Oh, man. Not for this. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, you know, the focus on America uh, for the last, um, you know, at least a, a month. Uh, has been on uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, white women couldn't stand not being the center of fucking tension <laughs> for 30 days so they had to find a way to make it about them so the Me Too resurgence is back. Son, Akash this scarier than the second wave of Corona. Ak <laughs> 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 Bro, Akash called it Me Too too. Yeah. This shit is Me T-W-O. Yeah. Let's start that hashtag. Oh, this shit is more like Me, Me, Me. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, oh, so they're no. out there. They're coming. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, it started with... We spoke a little bit about this on the Patreon. It started with uh, Chris D'Elia. A lot of smoke there. A lot of smoke there. The, the tricky thing with D'Elia is that, like, all this, all this shit came out. The crazy shit came out was, like... Him allegedly, I got through allegedly, and I and I contacted Chris because I I was like, yo, you gotta tell me what the fuck deal is because some of this shit is weird, and um, it was underage girls, right? Yes, allegedly he was contacting underage girls, and um, I contacted him. I was like, bro, what is this thing? Why are you commenting on some girl's picture where she posts some people in a fucking school bus? Like that, pretending you, is hilarious. Yeah, and then he was that like, "Friends me as a comedian." So mm. then he said that, that he said that girl told me she's 24. I have screenshots and everything. I'm organizing everything, and I'm gonna you know release it. And there's gonna be articles coming out. I'm like, all right. Tricky thing with with, and then there's another one where there was like an email exchange where a girl says she was 17, and then like a month later she hits him back and he's like, "Come over and make out." And I asked him about it, and he didn't really give me any answer about that one. Yeah. So I don't know. And I was like, bro. You, is there some more context here? Like, what's going on? Did he say, did he say anything? I think he's holding all his cards until he can put together a full, uh, like, a full rebuttal and put everything out all together on his podcast. I said, you better hurry up, bro, because <laughs> every day it just seems worse. Son, yeah, but you, so here's the tricky thing: you guys put together an entire crowd work special in a week. So. Delia can't defend <laughs> like himself day. as not a rapist in a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just screenshots, dog. <laughs> Ain't no fucking music. Ain't no intro you got to cheat. Yo, but the <laughs> tricky thing with him is that, like, I don't think he would deny he's a wild, like, womanizer. Yeah. So the tricky thing is he's got to basically go, all right, I'm a piece of shit to women, but I didn't fuck underage women. I think that's all you got to do, to be honest with you. I think most of us would be like, yeah, okay. At least you don't fuck underage women. Yes, but it's a tricky thing because it's who's going to come back and like support that. I mean, that was his apology. Was it? TMZ was, look, I have done some foul shit to women, essentially, but this isn't true. None right. of them were underage. I will do better. I will, I will continue to do better is always funny. Like, when did right. you start... Yeah, I mean, continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> I will continue to do better. I don't want you continuing I'll nothing. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> well, in fairness to him, I haven't seen really a lot of stuff come out post like 2017, 2018. It seems right. like a lot of the accusations were from prior to that time. Right. So maybe he cleaned up a little like when his life started getting more serious. I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. That's my hope. I don't know if yeah. that's the case. Yeah, I also just want to see how are you because the way he's texting these girls, this is the thing. There's no concrete proof that I've seen that he knows they're 16 and doesn't give a fuck, which is tricky. But the way he's texting them, it's like you're talking to a kid almost like. So that's the thing. We, it should be illegal to share how we talk to women. 
Hey, man. <laughs> son, that's son, the scariest son, shit, potentially. Son, it is, is heartbreaking, bro. <laughs> like, they released, they released my boy Shab's text, bro, to girls, and I'm reading them shits, and I'm like, man, <laughs> this is how I sound. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> no, nah, but it's, yo, you sound so corny. Like, if I look back uh, at any course, DMs, yo. there's no way to sound cool in a DM. Bruh, I think only Trey Songs did that shit. I have read every conversation. Oh, every time I read a conversation with a girl I was even like talking to, I'm like, what the fuck? Who yeah. is this guy? So yeah. That's why you got to talk in em- emojis. If you're talking in emojis, then it's like, it could be. And then people start clowning your emoji yeah, choices. Bro. That's how specific people are with how to talk to women. It's like, you hear literally people like, look at these corny ass emojis. I thought sunglasses is good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's a good emoji, sunglasses. <laughs> right? Like, honestly, that was my go-to. If I didn't have a response when I was emoji. back in the day, DM oh. girl, sunglass emoji. What does that mean? Bitch, I don't know. I didn't have anything to say. I didn't, you didn't know I had nothing to say? <laughs> that's why in person, shit is always so much more difficult because you can't just go, well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's like, I was, so what are we? <laughs> <laughs> Sunny outside, ain't it? <laughs> like, how was your date? I don't know. He kept on putting on his sunglasses the whole time, <laughs> nonstop. So yeah, man, it's a, it's a wild world out there. Obviously, everybody's been asking us um, what we think. Look, if you have like hundreds and hundreds of girls coming out saying what a piece of shit you are, right? Yeah. To them, probably a piece of shit. Yeah. To women, yeah. right? Um, that being said, that's very different than being a pedophile. Yeah, nobody looking at Chris D'Elia thinking he's a nice guy to women. Right. Like Maybe. I don't know. I never I never really judged prior. You know what I mean? I, I was never, uh, I never really, he never gave me any the attention. The stereotype was, of a good looking white dude who's funny You is, can fuck a lot of girls and not be a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying people would judge him like that. Sure. Maybe it, it, it wasn't, it wouldn't be surprising. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And there could be people listening to this right now that have no fucking clue who Chris D'Elia is and that's sure. fair. Um, but, uh, so yeah, so the thing was is like there are two very different things. And that is something that we need to get to the bottom of. Because yeah. it's not illegal to be a piece of shit to women. Yeah. It's illegal to fuck underage women. Yes. And you go to jail for yes. and you get beat up, frankly. Yeah. As you should. As you should for fucking underage women. If you're being shitty mm-hmm. to women, that's really on your fan base. Yeah. If your fan base don't tolerate that shit, then they go, fuck this guy. I'm out of here. Yeah. If they do. Then they go, okay, it is what it is. Yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of rock stars that were shitty to fucking women. People are like, all right, we're cool with that. And then maybe there were some that were shitty women that were, they weren't cool. But that's really up to your fan base yeah. to decide. And then up to your peers if they want to associate. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the fan base don't really know how he deals with. Women. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, why so. would anybody know? I never got that intention. Yeah. You no, know? because you said, like, it's up to the fan base to cancel him if he's, like, shitty Once with women. Once they know. Like, oh, now you're talking yeah, about Yeah, once oh, they yeah. know. Oh, God, like, yeah. that's, that's the decision. Yeah. 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 But um, but yeah, man. I you know I don't. I just want to say Chris pedophilia. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find. I was trying to find a way to slide it in. I I, I was just babbling on trying to find a way to slide it in. I couldn't do it. You know what I mean? Yo, and then Jeff Ross so got in some guy. me too heat. You know the roast molester Jeff Ross. <laughs> 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 the roast molester in general. The roast molester general. <laughs> uh, some oh chick God. who he claims is crazy, right? It's getting pretty hot for the roast master right now, huh? <laughs> 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 but that is kind of wild. Like some chick who he claims is crazy is coming for him, and she got like receipts. But the receipts are like, look, here's a picture where he was wearing his hat. And now I have the hat. I watched the video that she put out, or at least yeah. a snippet of it. I'm not saying she's wrong, Yo, but not- you be editing this shit on iMovie and like putting a title screen, and it's just like it's just an odd look. Can I be honest with you, bro? And she knows who fucking Jason Stein is, or whatever his name is. Steinberg. That Steinberg. Yeah. Can I be honest with yeah. you, bro? This is a um, it's a story about molestation, right? But it's a story about molestation, and it's just like. I watched a lot of Law and Order SVU. Is like you need to cut the fat. This shit is fucking twenty minutes long, growing through pictures and that kind of stuff. And it's just like, yo, come on, shorty, yeah. come on. Is there anything you learn from comedy? You're in these comedy clubs all the time. You never like this a long setup. 
<laughs> she's talking about how much she loves comedy from the age of 15 on. Oh, my God. You taking this guy's head off. Oh, my God. He's so Jeff came out. <laughs> yeah, I was trying. So That's what I was out. waiting for in the middle of the video. When well, Jeff came out and said she's crazy. She he said he's going to sue. Mental health and he's going to sue her back. And But that wasn't the best response to Me Too. Akash, what was the best response to a Me Too? I've been waiting for someone to do this one. Which one? Phase on love. Oh, phase on love. <laughs> Son, if this, because this is the reality. If they come for you, I'm wondering, right? And that was what I was wondering with Chris, and that's why I text Chris. I was like, motherfucker, why aren't you swinging? This is your life. Yeah. Like, this is your life right now. Legit your Legit life. Legit your life. If you and, go to jail for this, son, it, your life is over. You, you want to be the molester in jail? The pretty boy molester? Shit. Fuck yeah. it. Shit. It's over, yo. I bet you gonna be taking some pictures with your shirt on. Yeah. There ain't gonna be a lot of shirt off pics <laughs> in jail. So, so there's this girl. Oh, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. When it comes to this kind of like Me Too shit, I'm like, where the fuck are the haymakers? If somebody's coming for your life, yeah. haymakers Bro. on everybody. It's, it's a, let's go. And low key, if you're not throwing haymakers, it looks a little weird. To me, just because of the way I would act yes. if i was falsely accused of something yeah the way i would act go over yeah. the top i'm going over the top mark <laughs> i'm fighting for my fucking life like you said that's it i'm yeah. in a corner yeah. boxed in yeah you know mm -hmm. so this is how you throw some haymakers this chick i'm not gonna say her name accuses because she might be right who knows but she accuses phase on love she says someone in phase on love's entourage Basically, just like tried to essentially try to rape her after she got off stage, like start dragging her by her hair. She's six months pregnant. She fights him off. And then she says it was at a certain improv. And then Faze on Love's response is, I never performed at that improv. And then she's like, correction, it was at the Ontario improv. And then Faze on Love's response is in another screenshot where he basically is just like, you just going to name every improv? I didn't perform there either. And he then, goes, he goes, uh, sorry, Bray Improv, never performed there. She goes, he, then she goes, sorry. Ontario, I confuse the two. First of all, why is she apologizing to the guy who's part of the crew <laughs> yeah, yeah. tried to rape her? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then he goes, should we go through all the improvs until you find one I've performed at? Kick rocks, bitch. <laughs> and then he goes, hashtag free Bill Cosby. <laughs> A little bit far. I don't know. I don't know. If you're trying to say you're not a rapist, I don't know if you hashtag like yeah. the most famous comedian <laughs> rapist. Bars, yo. So I don't know. I, I don't bars, know. Bars, yo. I don't know. But <laughs> how much do you not think he raped? If he's like, That's another you know thing. what? While I'm at it, free Bill Cosby. Real talk. I, I did nothing and Ted Bundy's innocent. Yes. <laughs> like, huh? the fuck is going on over here, man? Mean? But that's the guy that's acting like you got nothing on me, yo. That's, yo, you call the girl that accuses you of me too a bitch? You know you're innocent. You know you're innocent. Because during Me Too, you can't be sexist because they'll use that against you. You got to be so clean that you're like, fuck this bitch. You accusing me of some shit I did or my squad or some oh shit. He God. probably didn't even text his squad to be like, you're trying to rape this pregnant girl. Like, I don't even think he sent the text out. He sent an initial text response like, my manager was a woman at the time or whatever. So like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Real talk, why bring his name into it? Talk to the man who was part of it. Yeah. Bring that guy's name into it. He's not famous enough. Call the cops about it. No, I'm just saying, you know why a lot of, well, some women are making these accusations. So you're saying she's doing it for clout? Yes. Look, I'm not saying it's possible. Here's the, here's the tricky shit with, with me too, for But real. believe all women. Say what? <laughs> believe all women. Man, Al, shut up, dog. <laughs> you, <got laughs> you only believe women when they say they're pregnant, bro. That's, <laughs> That's just allegedly. That ain't nothing but allegedly. You just gotta throw that shit in there. <laughs> so... Hey, this bitch is all lying. Hey, believe all women. Yeah. Believe all women. <laughs> Here's Not that there's anything wrong with that. Here's the tricky shit it. about about the uh, <laughs> about me too, right? Yeah. Is it like and low key, it was that Epstein shit that put me on to it. It's like there are so many women that have literally just been ignored that have legitimate fucking rape cases against them, yeah. ignored by the police, ignored by FBI, ignored by all these things. Mm -hmm. So I 100 percent get. The second people are willing to listen to your stories, that every woman and her mother and her sister come out with every one of their shitty situations because, yo, I'm not bullshitting. And I, if you talk to your girl, if you guys talk to your girls, if you talk to your girl, every one of them has a shady story with a dude. Yeah. Okay. Every yeah. single girl yeah. has a very shady story with a dude. It might not be rape, but it might be like, yo, I thought I was going to get raped. Mm -hmm. So... 
in these, in these, and then they don't feel the courage to come out because there's been so many times where they've been accused of doing it, or sorry, that they tried to come out and they've been squashed. Yeah. You know that universities have a whole system set up where they take care of it within the university so yeah. it doesn't get to the police? Yeah. Why y'all think that they do that? So the university looks safer. So the, the university don't there. look like a fucking rape haven. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about Epstein's Island? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? University of Florida. <laughs> you ain't need to go to the island to catch rapes. So I completely empathize and understand with any woman who sees women being listened to and goes, matter of fact, I got a story. I got a fucking story to tell. Let's go. I completely empathize and I would listen to it in a fucking heartbeat. I think that there are also, unfortunately, situations, right, where Sports isn't happening. We got to listen to all these stories. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. For, there are situations where there are people that are, they have other motives. Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah. And because they have, just like there are charities which aren't giving money to the right, to the cause and actually siphoning off money for themselves, right? Yeah. yeah. Even charities for someone like George Floyd yeah. and their family, there are charities that are not giving all that money to them. Yeah. And if that exists in a situation like that, it definitely exists in a situation like yeah. this. And the reason why we become so inflamed, men, we become so inflamed when we hear those stories is because we, at least in this room, are like, well, I'm not raping nobody. Yeah. And if these girls could just claim rape on an innocent person and then it washes their whole career away, I got to push back against that because that's the only thing that could protect me, someone who doesn't rape. Mm -hmm. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. And I, so it's like, so I think a lot of women, when they hear this shit, they're like, why aren't guys willing to hear these stories? Why aren't that? Why aren't they? We are. But we also get scared when a simple claim could be taken as gospel. Yeah. When it's not true. And even if it isn't true, even if it ends up not being true, you still get completely washed yeah yeah guilty until proven innocent is tough if you can be guilty just off and like if, if yes. you're if you're one of the potential people that would be guilty just off like the accusation yes that's scary son that. there's a so yeah we have to like take a look at the timing of these accusations like the time of month because they have a way of syncing up are you trying to say it's period behavior yeah. <laughs> thank you for just stepping on my fucking <laughs> Al, are you trying to say that these girls are just me tooing on their period Al? <laughs> edit point <laughs> Al, what are you saying are you saying rape isn't real you just on your period that's it that's edit. Edit. how I can it. say it edit that's, that's not your hymen that's further than that's your edit <laughs> just keep saying this <laughs> no, that's edit. further <laughs> phase on love, bro. That's <laughs> phase on love just called her a bitch. You're like, you bleed. <laughs> Yo, that's it's that time with the me too. You know, it's <laughs> <that> <laughs> so look, is look, I, I understand I understand the concern and I also understand why girls are talking. I think it's important that guys actually understand why girls jumping on it. Like, yeah. like the initial reaction, I'm sure, like most people, and was definitely that way for me, it was like, oh, now y'all want to talk? Now? Yeah, because they feel safer in numbers. Mm. Right. It's like you're all these girls that were calling out Chris that were of legal age. They probably didn't feel safe just going. This guy's a douchebag when it was just by themselves, because then they look like some like, I don't know, girl that got ghosted and got yeah, upset yeah, because yeah. of it. Right. But then when there's a bunch of other girls going, this is shitty. They're like, oh, I had the same experience. Yeah. Maybe have the, they have this fear that's like this guy's so powerful nobody's going to listen to me. And then we kind of respond in our own fear, which is like, yo, one accusation can ruin everything. Like, yeah. true or not. So we're just scared responding back. And, yeah. then, and then people, and I want to have this conversation, and then people go into this thing, which is really interesting. It's this power dynamic shit. Like, we always talk about, like, every correction is an overcorrection, right? Right. This is the thing I hate, is when people start going, this person had power over them. Okay, what kind of power? Like physical power? No, they were a celebrity and that person admired them. And because they admired them, they were put in a power position over them. And that's why it's considered sexual assault or sexual misconduct. Yeah. We're not talking about underage girls. We're talking about girls yes, that are over 18. That's bullshit. And I really think Louis kind of started this when he gave his apology. He goes, these women admired me and I took advantage of No, I had that heard that line of thinking before. Really? Was, yeah, you were oh. taking advantage of a power dynamic, which is just like... Underage, illegal, that guy belongs in the jail. If you are 25 and he's 28 and he's famous and he sleeps with you and it's a power dynamic, what hot girl doesn't have a power dynamic then? 
That's the conversation we should have, right? Is that power dynamics exist within sex, right? And sex is a fucking murky, muddy topic, and it's really difficult to talk about. And we are not on this podcast going to be the ones to go, this is how you have sex. Yeah. These are the rules. Sex is primal, and we're in a civilized society. And those two don't that's mesh a, well. That's a great way of, mm -hmm. and, and what we're trying to do, that's a great way of putting it. And what we're trying to do is we recognize how primal it is, and we're, and we're trying to go, okay, here is the course of action that makes sense. Here's a civilized way to have sex. And, and we're literally doing it because we care about women. Yeah. We're like, how can we make sex the safest thing for women? And every once in a while we go too far. We're like, we're just going to ask you every two minutes if it's okay. Yeah. Do you still consent? Do you still consent? And then women start going, man, just fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, but, but at first a woman's like, well, actually, I really like that. That's nice. So we overcorrect and then we come back, et cetera. Yeah. The power dynamic thing in sex is very interesting for so many reasons. And we were having this discussion yesterday. There are so many different power exchanges that exist within sex. Mm -hmm. You know, Mark brought up a good point yesterday. He goes, the tricky thing about power dynamics is like, you can't turn your power off. So if you are a person that is famous, by that rule, you can't fuck anybody that likes you. Yeah, you have to <laughs> fuck someone who's equally famous? Check it. Even if they're equally famous, what if they admire you? Yeah, Sorry, I can't yeah. fuck. I can only fuck people that that don't admire me. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an odd thing. Like Louis literally said in his in his stupid apology, he goes, um, uh, "You know, these women admired me, and I took advantage of that." Motherfucker, are you telling women they should fuck people they don't admire? That's only men do that. It's the reason we want to accomplish things is because you're not going to physically want to fuck most men. So we try to. Do things that are worth you admiring in some way. Yo, I, yo, I like this guy's. Con I like this guy's art. I like this guy's apartment. Even mm -hmm. I admire this guy's apartment. Yes, that's why we work hard. Mm -hmm. That's like evolution. What about the second part of his apology where he goes that he took advantage of their admiration? What? It, how is that taking advantage of admiration? And is that wrong? If it's a boss and an employee and the employee's worried he's going to lose her job, I can understand that's a power dynamic. Absolutely. That's also sexual harassment. No, that's that's a, a law. That's a great point you're making, right? If it's a boss and someone they work and works under them, right? Yeah. You want to know if it was really equal society? If it was truly equal society and we were decent individuals, that boss should be able to hit on the person that he works with. I'll tell you why. Interesting. Why is that? Because if we respected when women were like, I'm not interested and didn't hold it against them, like yeah. that against them and didn't have this fucking ego thing where now we want to punish them yeah. for not willing. It's like when the guy hits on the girl on the street and then they walk away and we'll fuck you then yeah. bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we didn't have, we'll fuck you then bitch yeah. in the office, women wouldn't be afraid to say no. Right. And then they could work together harm harmoniously. To me, I think 90% of people meet at where they work, yeah. right? But to me, if you work with someone and you find them beautiful and then you start to like admire the, their work ethic and you think they're really intelligent and smart, that's a way deeper connection than some bitch you met at the fucking bar that got a mini skirt on yeah. that you're like, hey, I'd like to meet you or you want to have a drink at my table. Yeah. Like now, granted, I like the rules that we have in place in the workplace because I don't think that men or women have the, um, I don't know, like the, the lack of like emotional reaction to being rejected. Yeah. Right, so I want to protect women in that environment. Just yeah. don't hit on them. But if we were truly equal and treated each other with true decency, we would be able to hit on the people we work with and accept rejection. So, with the rules of Does sex, that makes sense. Yeah. With the, so basically, I think the rules of sex would be a lot clearer if everybody was okay with rejection. But since we're not and we're human beings, and yes. everybody takes that personally. Yes. That's where the power dynamic becomes scary. So if somebody that works underneath somebody's like, "No, I don't want to have sex with you," then that person that's a boss is like. Fuck you. You yes. reject me, mm. stupid bitch. You'll never do anything Fuck in you. this business. I'm going right. to hold you down in this. I can't believe you. That bruised my ego. But if the person, if we're all cool with rejection, it's you, would you like to go out? No. Okay. Would you like to go out? No. Okay. Somebody say cool. yes. Right. Because then the opposite is that you have to say yes. And then this is where you get girls that do stuff and they go, I did it, but I didn't want to. And then the average person goes, well, why'd you do something you didn't want to? And, and then they're like, like well, I, I thought I was going to get fired. I thought right. I'd never have a career. I was wrapped up in this power dynamic that from the outside, we observe and we're like, that's what's fucking dumb. And I get why we're trying to protect for that. Because if that's your daughter, you want to protect her? You don't want her ball, your boss hitting on your daughter? I don't even want my daughter to have a, a boss. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like low key, like I don't want no guy tell him my girl what to do. I think we even talked about yeah, this on this yeah, podcast yeah. once. Like she had wild, a male boss, and I was rules, like, bro. "What's going on with that? Like <laughs> you're just gonna tell her to write emails all day? Hey, right? You know what I'm saying? It's just weird." Yo, that's actually true. Cause I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" My girls only had female bosses and one gay dude, and I loved that gay dude. Yeah, I was like, that's, that's the great. guy, yo. Bro, you I love like, this guy. But how fucked up is that? Is you know what I mean? Like. He's asking her to uh, to order lunch for him and shit, and she doing it. I asked for a cup of water. This bitch is like, get yourself a cup of water. Like, what the fuck is going on, bro? Like, you what's would, happening? You would not do well at church, bro. Wait, wait, wait. The, why? The, the priest starts talking. And you're like, yo, chill, 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 chill. <laughs> Stop telling to get yeah. on the knees, yo. What yeah. the fuck? <laughs> yo, yo, you don't need communion. Yo, you yo, don't need that shit. Don't put nothing in your mouth, yo. <laughs> put your tongue back in your fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk, dog. <laughs> oh shit. Anyway, so back to what we we're saying. Now. Oh yeah. So that part, power dynamic and work fucked up. Yes. Right. Completely understood, etc. But then when you take that same thing that we're trying to protect from, and then you bring it into the world, right? Yeah. Where a guy just happens to be famous, and a girl is attracted and admires that guy for being famous, and you go, "Hey, he can't have sex with that girl because he has this like, uh, there's this imbalance of power there." What people need to realize is that like people, le- people, men and women leverage their power. Yeah, a beautiful woman is completely aware of her power. Oh yeah, and leans into that power. Oh, she yeah. gets pulled over. You can have any of our girlfriends will probably be like, hey, you get pulled over. Maybe there's like a wink or a yeah. smile. Yeah. Hey, you want to pull up to a club and you don't want to wait online? You walk up to the door. Hey, I'm beautiful. Maybe I'm beautiful enough to just get in and cut the line. Do you know what I mean? And we're not telling women you shouldn't do that. Walk right in the club. That's why we're there. Yeah. We don't want you waiting online with us. A power dynamic. I see a girl waiting online for the club. I'm like, yeah. is this girl ugly and I don't know this yet? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait online in the club. That's crazy. Oh, a power dynamic only exists is you is if if you saying no, I can affect your life. Like at a job, I can affect your life. If I'm a teacher, I can affect your grade, your life. If I'm famous and I say no. Bitch, leave. Like, what am I? What impact do I have after this? I think the only thing I can think about in this case, uh, some of the women or girls asked him if they can, if he can mentor them or whatever. They were interested in becoming comics. No, but I, no, but I'm just saying. So <laughs> that's where the power dynamic would be because they're like, oh well, if I don't agree to making out or whatever he requested, then he won't train me to become a comic. Yeah, fine. No, but I'm just saying that's where in this scenario, training is like, no, I understand. But training is like, it's not like a tangible thing that leads a job. There is a salary that is set. Your promotions can be in line. Like it's a set path. You are in this job. Finding another job is hard. If a guy doesn't want to mentor you. Okay. Yeah. Go big brothers, big sisters. There's plenty saying. of mentors out there. Like yeah. I understand, I understand what he's, but like what he's saying is that in that dynamic, maybe you could take advantage of that relationship i don't believe that that's the case and i also think that we need to be like completely aware and this is outside of that situation just any situation it's really funny because i disagree on on uh on whitney's uh whitney had a response and i disagree with one part of it where she goes like uh a fan should be able to dm what is it a fan should be able to dm uh mm. c- you know I, I, I a celebrity i without- thought that was teenage girls should be able to DM and guys shouldn't respond. I don't think it's that. I'll pull up the exact tweet that way we can get. No, there. I think it's fans. I, I don't. If it's teenage girls, I thought then, she was referring yeah. to underage girls. She, she says in in the tweet. Uh, okay, pulling it up. The girls should be able to be a fan of a comedian they admire without becoming a sexual target. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, was that? I disagree. I dis. <laughs> no, no. First of all, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, <laughs> If you're a fan, absolutely. And listen, I'm saying this as someone who is in a faithful relationship and has a girlfriend. I have nothing to gain from this. I plan on marrying my girl Correct. and having kids with her. So all you bitches out of luck. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that being said, it's really interesting when we saw these. So when we, I am also faithful. So all you bitches are very lucky that you're not getting <laughs> horrible ass dick. Shit is committed. <laughs> <laughs> the suffering stops at my girl. <laughs> So, so the thing that that came out is this, there's this idea, right? I agree with that statement in that way, of course. That being said, it doesn't necessarily absolve you from it, right? So a lot of these girls were like, they DM'd, and this is not just about Chris, this is just other situations, right? Like people DMing this, that kind of stuff. Girls complaining about DMs, right? Yeah. What, What is very interesting is like, 
what I took that as a criticism of is a girl DMing a guy going, oh my God, you're so funny, or oh my God, you're, you're great tonight, et yeah. cetera. And then going, a girl should, basically she going, a girl should be able to do that and it not be interpreted as anything besides just you were congratulating you on your show. Okay. Right? I agree. Yeah. My question to you, Akash, is... Would your girl agree that was the intention of that DM? Ooh, I was waiting to see how you got out of this one, and you did it. You done did it. I would ask you any girl it. who says we should just be able to DM and then nobody should think anything of it. I would ask any girl who says that, what would you say if a girl DM your man? Mm. What would you think that DM? I think that people are abundantly aware of what DMs are. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's a song, it go down in a DM. Yeah. <laughs> Right? We know what the fuck a DM is about, and we know there are different ways. Some girls just come straight out, foot picks, titty picks, whatever. Some girls will be like, hey, what's going on later okay, tonight, winky picks. face? You know okay, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like, I think we know what the fuck DMs are, and some girls that they just want to say great show will say, hey, me and my boyfriend went to your show. We had so much fun. Yep. They throw boyfriend in there to let you know it's completely yep. platonic and low key. They might be saying that and they go, what are you guys doing later? That girl might be leveraging her sexuality to hang out with you because her boyfriend wants to. Mm. The boyfriend might be going, hey, he's not going to respond to my DM because I don't have tits. You have tits. Use the power of your tits yeah. to get that person to That's respond. A dangerous game, my friend. That's a dangerous game. <laughs> you know game. what I'm saying? No. So now, no. are you saying that like the DMs, because there's such an overt sexual uh, tone in it, yep. that it's on the messenger to make it clear what the intentions are? I think it's a I, shared responsibility. Yeah I, 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 yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's like, it's shared, but it, it's not on anybody. Okay. But it's not absurd to assume uh, that there could be sexual context. If that, you are messaging right. me privately, the understanding is there's a reason you don't want this public. And maybe you're just shy. And sure, we should all just mm. assume that you're just shy and it means nothing. A lot of times, that's not what it means. And to Andrew's point... Our girls would not think it meant she's just shy. I would just right. ask girls what they think the DMs are. Yep. If I'm responding to random girls' DMs, my girls can be like, yo, why, what, what, what's good with that? And then I'm like, well, I'm just, girls are just DMing me. Is she literally going to go to me? She's like, are you so stupid to think yeah. that girls are just DMing and they don't want anything else? Yeah. Like, here's the thing. A lot of people read Playboy for the, for the fucking articles, right? Yep. Majority of people ain't looking at them fucking articles. <laughs> I can't name one writer for Playboy. Yeah. I don't believe the words in Playboy. I <laughs> <laughs> can y'all name can y'all name one writer for Playboy? Like that was the thing that people love these articles. Yeah. I don't know a single article. <laughs> no. I didn't even know there was articles. Apparently the interviews were kind of good, and I'm assuming they got the interviews by being like, hey, you can fuck any one of these girls. You give us an interview. <laughs> I guess I guess, <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is like 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 the way you weren't there is a shared responsibility that we all have for the murky waters that is the sexual exchange. It's mysterious, mm -hmm. it's dangerous, and it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I want women to be the most comfortable they possibly can be in those situations. I truly do. Okay? Um, that's not to say that there aren't fucking psychopaths out there and there are sociopaths out there that are like womanizing and doing fucking horrible shit and being real pieces of shit to women. Mm -hmm. You can fuck a lot of girls and date a lot of girls without being a horrible piece of shit to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you can also fuck a lot of girls and date a lot of girls and be really good to the vast majority of them and then fuck up and be a piece of shit to a couple of them. Yep. Yeah. You could also not fuck that many girls and still be a piece of shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. valid point, you know what I mean? now, can you like uh, could you clarify one part like do yeah. you think that people with power could use their power in order to manipulate a young impressionable person in order to like exploit them for sex yeah you could of course you could yeah what define young and impressionable so like you're 18 you dm someone you're like oh you're really funny and then a famous person could use their power in order so, to have sex with them what i i 100 i agree with that and then you could i will say this though we have to decide an age when women are women and we got to stop infantilizing women. If an 18 year old woman is old enough to be sent to Iraq to go to war, right? If she's been old, she's old enough to give her life for the United States of America. She's old enough to get a DM. 
if she's old enough to get a $400,000 loan that will cripple her financially for the rest of her life for college, she's old enough to get a DM, right? Like we can't infantilize women when we want because we remove their agency and we remove their power when we're just trying to create these like little bumpers like they have in bowling. Bars, yo. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Like their agency, this guy said. It's I don't true. Even know what that means, yo. But th wow. does that make You're sense? These bitches ain't got no agent. That's the problem with a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> they just try to get some clout. This bitch out here ready to get wrecked by Jason Steinberg. <laughs> Come on, yo. Don't call UTA. <laughs> Stop getting UTIs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it is a weird situation where it's like, yeah, you can create all these rules to protect women and we could take the age and we could decide what it is. But if you can vote for the United States, if, uh, president of the United States, if you can go to war, if you can get a fucking huge bank loan, if we can give you insane responsibility at 18 years old, that's the assumption that you are mature enough to handle it. You should be mature enough to handle a fucking DM. Yeah. And if we don't think women are mature enough at 18, let's make that law and let's pass that law. 21. 21. That's fine. 35. I don't care what it is. Whatever you guys think it is or whatever the country thinks it is, let's do that. Let's do that. But it's 18. And I don't care if your state says 17 or 16. Nah. I don't care if 17 or 16 is legal in your state. It's 18. Mm -hmm. In the court of public opinion, it's 18. Yeah. And if you go under 18, don't give me woes in Colorado. No. Yeah, yeah. No. You are after young girls, fam. That shit got to be a national law. Yeah, we can't have this state to state. <laughs> you know what I mean? What <laughs> yeah. is that? That's crazy. Mississippi, I think, 16. I think you I, fucking 16 year olds on technicality? Some, there's some states like 14 or some shit <laughs> with, like with that. With parental consent, you can get married in New Hampshire at 12 or something like that? What is going on, fucking bro? Weirdos, yo. That's not even bar mitzvah age. Son, yeah. <laughs> 12? This bitch ain't even a bot yet? Yeah, that's adoption. That's just adoption, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that's just Woody yo, Allen, yo. Yo, son. Anyway, so I think that it is an important conversation we have. I think these conversations are really important. I hope this sheds a little bit of light on like why guys are frustrated. And I hope that we articulated why we get frustrated and kind of like scared from these Me Too movements. Uh, but also, I hope it sheds some light on why the sexual experience for women is fucking terrifying. Yeah. It, because literally every girl has had a horrible experience sexually. Mm -hmm. nah, that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm not trying to like... And not horrible like he was, he sucked in bed. Horrible like, oh, fuck, this is terrifying. Right. You were I, coerced or whatever. I'm, yeah. I'm too drunk. I might be raped. Something might... Like that is a normal thing that women have had to experience in their life. Yeah. And we never have had to experience that. Yeah. So it's hard for us to even calculate. And also, if you're a fucking decent guy, it's not even coming into your brain yeah. that you would want to rape a girl. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm too insecure for that. <laughs> I like when the crowd claps. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I can't be bombing. Some bombing. <laughs> yeah, that's bombing. all rape is. Yeah. It's like, yo, these comics that bomb a lot, we gotta watch out for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, because you you enjoy no's too much. Yo, boo and no <laughs> are very similar, bro. I've seen you at a show when someone <laughs> fell asleep because they were so drunk and you yelled at them. You were like, yo, what are you doing? Wake up. Wake up. Yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> so imagine fucking. fucking <laughs> <laughs> So just to slice it thin, like you agree that someone could use their power in an abusive way in order to manipulate someone to have sex, but just because someone leverages their power in a sexual relationship does not mean it's abuse. Yes, and I think someone exists, both male and female. I think there are females that will, will I think there are men that can abuse their power, yep. especially uh, you know in certain industries where women really want to get into that yeah. industry. And that's fucked up. And that's fucked. And I and I know for a fact, famous women who have done that to men who are yeah. very famous, right? right? Uh, now famous, right? So I think people use their power to get what they want, and sometimes that's sex. And I think that's abusive, and I think that's fucked up. Yes. I also think there are ways where like people are using their power to engage in, you know, to get the most out of the situation they're in, right? So there are girls that might use their sexual power to get some free drinks, but they'll just kind of walk up to a, a bottle service table, and those guys are using their financial power to have bottles so that girls walk up to the table. And that exchange is is good. As long as both parties are cool with it. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. I'm okay with that. How, how thinly do you have to slice morality on this girl's getting free drinks? And it's like, all right, who gives a fuck, really? You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. So in conclusion, let's kind of wrap this discussion up. The reality is we, we're not going to sit here and go, these are the rules for sex. One, because there's no women here. So we need yeah. to know, one, how they feel. Two, you guys haven't had enough sex with multiple people to even really talk about it, right? So you don't understand. Even with the one person, I haven't had enough <laughs> sex, to be honest with you. Yeah. Right? So like, we're not going to go and say that. And um, 
that's a longer discussion and a discussion that needs to be had with tons of different guys and girls together and mapping out all the different possibilities and how we would interact with those things. It is a dark and murky, and like Akash said, and I think you described it the best, primal activity that we are trying to put makeup on and class up and make safe for everyone involved. Yeah. Because I really do think the majority of guys do not want to fucking make a girl feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think the majority of girls do not want to me to a guy. They yeah. don't ever want to be even put in a situation where they would feel like they'd have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe we're afraid to talk about sex publicly because, you know, we might have these like uh, Judeo Christian values that make sex seem taboo and it's a weird conversation to have. But we need to have the fucking conversation. Yeah. And I think it's good that we're having these conversations. And I hope the thing that comes out of this is a more equitable and uh, safer environment for sex for everybody. For everybody. I All right, we're going to take a break for a second, pay some bills. Listen, don't have hangovers. Ho All right, we're going to take some bills. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, All right. That shit in there, All right. All right, we're going to pay some bills. Uh, take a break for a second. Whoopsie. All right, we're going to take a break for a second, pay some bills, okay? Um, why would you have hangovers anymore if you don't need to? Simple as that. Do you have hangovers? Are you drinking way more during quarantine than you were pre-quarantine? Yes, you are. I know I am. Hangovers suck. There's a way to avoid them. Here it is. Simple as that. DHM detox, okay? A lot of people think that hangovers are all caused by dehydration, right? So you're just like, oh, let me drink a bunch of water before I go to bed, and then I won't be hungover, and then you're still hungover the next day. Oh, did I not drink enough water? No. That's not what it is. This is what's caused it, okay? It's, uh, there's a buildup of alcohol's toxic byproduct, okay? So DHM Detox uses science to help boost your body's natural response to alcohol and help break down those toxins. So now those toxins were not being broken down by water. They're being broken down by the natural byproducts that your body has. DHM Detox is just going to be steroids for that shit. So it's steroids for your hangover cure. Use it. It's made up of natural ingredients, antioxidants, and vitamins. You take two capsules after your first couple drinks, and it goes to work. Double up and take another packet if you're having a big night. They come in convenient packets, and they are easy to share with your friends. It's now a key part of the drinking routine. Guys, go do it. Listen. And it's not not even just for like binge drinking 40 drinks. You know, if you're in your late 20s, 30s, you get hangovers after Sorry. two drinks. It's You drink wine, you get hungover, right. all just, this shit, man. Just get this as an investment in your old age. So this is what's going to happen, right? We got 20% off your order. You just head over to dhmdetox.com and use the promo code flagrant at checkout. That's dhmdetox.com. If you have any questions, send a message to at dhmdetox on Instagram. Simple as that. Um, look, just for just a couple of dollars, I'm telling you, you can wake up feeling fine and drinking. Um, go do that. Let's get back to the show. Uh, um, look, my man, my man, uh, Sean King, Talcum X, shout out to Talcum, Talcum X, bro. X, that's good. Um, he, he's out here, you know, Sean King's been out here. He's been, uh, very vocal during this time with George Floyd. And I haven't been very, at all critical with him because I think that most of have been, uh, most of us have been aligned to the things that he's been yeah. fighting for. Yeah. Um, but just like Sean King does, he's going to have to go and get out of pocket. You know, he's going to have to, he's going to have to get out of pocket, take it out of pocket like a handkerchief, a white <laughs> handkerchief. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Talcum X said, and this is the quote. Yes, I think the statues of the white Europe European they claim is Jesus should also come down. They're a form of uh, white supremacy. Always have been. In the Bible, the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in. Guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark. Tear them down. Wow. Now, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Here's a thing. <laughs> they didn't go to Denmark because they didn't know Denmark existed. One, obviously. Uh, <laughs> two, he just had sandals. It's freezing in Denmark. You can't go <laughs> through that weather. With, I mean, he's just not built for sandal. You know, Denmark, right? Yeah, I don't think that was even on the table. At yes. All. Second of all, walking on water is easy when it's made out of ice. He wouldn't even be special, <laughs> right? Like if Denmark is. You know, third of all, people take so many liberties with Jesus. Just make them black. What's the big fucking deal? You go to Asia, Jesus is Asian. You go to parts of Africa, you go to Ethiopia. My man was telling us uh, uh, last week, Abba was telling us last week when he grew up going to church in Ethiopia, he's Muslim, but when yeah. he was going to, going to any church, Jesus was black. You never see, you want your God to look like you if he's flesh. 
You want him to look like you. Yo, so just make him black. Nobody cares. Do you think Jesus really had abs? Jesus has abs in every rendition of, I haven't met a single Middle Eastern person with abs in my entire life. Not a single one has abs. Also, Can you yeah, name one? No, but here's what I was going to say. Jesus, there's a lot of dark skinned black Jesuses hanging up in black people's houses in America. Yep. If Jesus went to Egypt, I, the Egyptians I know aren't dark skinned black people. They look more Middle Eastern. Oh yeah. Egyptians are Middle Eastern. Look. Rami look Middle Eastern. Yeah. Everybody on his show when he went to Egypt, look Middle Eastern. Absolutely. So, if you hiding in Egypt, it's probably because you look Middle Eastern or dark. Is dark skin black Jesus a problem? Yo, just make. That's a great point. So, but make him put Jesus in blackface. Blackface him. Yes. <laughs> blackface Jesus. Give him an afro. Give him cornrows. Who gives a fuck? Change his name. Change his to what? I don't know. Black Jesus. <laughs> La Jesus. <laughs> no, the Jesus. The Jesus. The Jesus. The Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, but for real, it's like stop it with this tear down the statue shit. It's so stupid. I mean, crazy. They were he's accusing someone of presenting as a different race than they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's, isn't that crazy? <laughs> that is so crazy. That is so crazy that Sean King is accusing some of presenting themselves as a different race than they are. Oh, I man. mean, what a disgusting thing. It's vile. <laughs> it is absolutely it's vile. vile. It's just like, you're an, yo, man, how do you? Ugh. You're an imposter. Yeah. <laughs> how do you live with yourself as an imposter? I like don't that? know. How could you possibly be a different race than you actually are? Ugh. Where do you go to blend in? An HBCU? <laughs> <laughs> Where would you? Dude, you going to an HBCU is no different than white Jesus going to Egypt <laughs> and blend in. So shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah, real Yo, do you blend in in Atlanta and Bankhead or Buckhead? Which one of those two? I need to know. I'm just curious. Dog, I really hope black people, like, if you want Jesus to be black, by all means, black him up. Yeah. Black him up. Real talk. <laughs> Do it. Whatever you want to do, just do it. I don't think... Any, listen, Mark, you're the most Christian person here. Yeah. Would you give a flying fuck? Take him off the cross. Put him on a hoop. I don't give a shit. Like, <laughs> have him fucking dunk in Vince Carter style. I don't care. Make Dude, him Vince Carter. Real talk, bro. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, but there wasn't basketball back then. Who cares? Neither. There wasn't Denmark either. There wasn't Denmark. <laughs> that story's been rewritten a million times. Who knows what happen. really fucking happened? <laughs> it's all fake. It yeah, guess what? Jesus wasn't even Christian. He was fucking Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna break your heart when you find that out, huh? <laughs> the guy had a mezuzah on his front door. <laughs> okay? He was taking Saturdays off. Well, Sammy Davis Jr. more like Jesus than any black person I know, huh? <laughs> Wait, explain it. Oh, he's black and Jewish. Yeah. Yes, oh, he black is? and Jewish, like yeah. Kid Cudi. <laughs> Kid Cudi's Jewish? I like, think. Like Drake. Drake, huh? there we go. Yeah. Oh, Drake yeah. is black and Jewish. Yeah, yeah. But then he have that song, Kid Cudi have this song, like Black and Dreidel, Black and Dreidel. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not him. Wiz no. Khalifa. Yo. That's Wiz Khalifa. He's Middle Eastern, bro. Yeah. yeah. Khalifa. Yeah. Come Khalifa. On, mm. Come on. <laughs> black and Dreidel. Black and Dreidel. Black and Dreidel. Look, so all I'm trying to say is like, stop it with that shit. This, this fucking statue shit is driving me crazy where they want to switch the Columbus statue. Dude, wait, can we, can, I want to tell you something because we were doing research when we did our statues piece about the Columbus statue. You yeah. know what's hilarious? Hmm. You know who also wanted the Columbus statues taken down? Columbus? The KKK. Wow. Those were the first people, the Ku Klux Klan were the first people that were uh, arguing to get those statues removed. Why? Why? Because those statues were erected to make immigrant groups, specifically the Italian immigrant groups, feel comfortable and feel part of America. So they idolized this guy, Christopher Columbus, who was of Italian descent, who mm. came and discovered the new world. And they were like, hey, this guy is brave. He's just like you. He went to the new world with his hopes and dreams, etc." That's why the statue was erected to make immigrant groups feel welcomed mm. and a part of America. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's mind boggling. So the KKK was like, we don't want them feeling welcome and comfortable. We don't want to feel them to feel like they are part of this, this, uh, the, you know, the fabric of America. Yeah. So now you agree with the KKK. <laughs> like real talk. Any person, we said this on a piece, but any person that is offended by the Christopher Columbus statue, mm. how are they not offended by America? <laughs> they are kind of so then shall we get rid of america like i guess what i'm saying is any person who would be offended by the treatment of native americans by crystal columbus yeah must be offended by the treatment of native americans by america yeah yeah that, they are they're just not going anywhere who is it i mean there's a lot of people i don't want thanksgiving is a monstrous holiday celebrating it's a thanksgiving you, is lit 
Yo, you, uh, it's <laughs> it's my favorite it's holiday, lit. and they were trying to kill a group of people that they thought they thought was me. Not until they got that stomach full. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's the greatest holiday, yo, yo food, thanks, football, thanks and family. Would have sucked so much more if he actually got to see actual Indians, like from India, and we nah, had to fucking bro. eat Indian nah. butter chicken. Nah, every it be so I'm lit. Not nah. front. Thanksgiving will be Turkey a is a dry nah. ass fucking bro, animal. Bro, bro. If we got to actual India, nah. tandoori turkey, that geez. tandoori. No, fuck turkey. Give me that chicken. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you right about it. Give yeah, us yeah. that chicken. Y'all already have food down. These Native Americans can't cook shit. <laughs> dry turkey, dry corn. Real talk. Like have we potatoes. has any Native American food continued past Thanksgiving? I mean, their idea of a feast was just a bucket full of vegetables, buffalo burgers, <laughs> a cornucopia, a cornucopia. <laughs> Son. So we have buffalo burgers. Buffalo is Native American. That's some shit they. And eat. they're using every part of the buffalo. Buffalo wings. Buff- oh. <laughs> buffalo. Wings. They started that. <laughs> no, they did not start that. Why are they called Buffalo Wings? Because it's from Buffalo, the city? Dogs, yes. <laughs> That's why. Okay? But back to Native Americans. <laughs> He's so upset about Yeah, because that should be bothering me, bro. <laughs> that should be really bothering me. Look, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Native Americans, the cuisine fell off. Did it not? It fell off. It shouldn't even been on. I, I would go so far as to say maybe they ate that dry ass turkey and stuff and they're like we get rid of these motherfuckers they, they I, I really yeah. I literally I really a little bit if I <laughs> if I may if I may you may okay I think the food was so bad that the settlers were like oh they don't even have a culture <laughs> Right, so they're like, they won't mind if we just take over. Yeah. I would go so far as to say that Thanksgiving is actually a British meal. Wow, mm. wow. Let's go over it. Mashed potatoes it ain't got no fucking potatoes in America. Ooh. That's an Irish thing. Ooh. There was no potatoes here. What did they have? What's the traditional English breakfast? Bangers and mash. Bang. Mm. Okay. Mm. What else did we have? Stuffing. Definitely British. That's white people. Super I'll, white people. I How can I put more is. bread in something? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what else is that? The only thing they got is corn. Corn, corn slaps though. Corn slaps. Not gonna. But I don't it. even think we use the same corn. They call that shit maize, right? It was Mad Little. Yeah, it was Mad Little. Okay. And they called it maize. <laughs> my point is like if corn is your contribution to the meal that's rude because our bodies don't even eat that shit bro you ever eat corn you go up more corn yo that's that's probably when he found out he was not in india christopher columbus when he ate that dry ass bland ass food and no spice on this shit yo (laughs) real talk point y'all talk about how trash white people's food is Mm. Native American food worse. Nah, I think it's the same. So they didn't even have alcohol. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, right. how little attention uh, are you paying to food and cuisine and entertainment that you don't even got alcohol? Yeah. When was the last time? They you, do now. You were- <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but imagine how amazing alcohol is and our food is. Is it now they're like addicted nonstop? They can't help it. <laughs> the second they got white people food, they were just addicted, bro. <laughs> What's white people food? Alcohol what? and meth? Is alcohol, <laughs> meth, blankets, <laughs> being warm at night. <laughs> Yo, they got addicted to being warm at night, bro. They never had blankets and then we came <laughs> yeah. through. All right, I got some more Indian food. Okay, go. Native American, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Uh, deer meat. Venison? Yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. That's, that's, hey, that's is venison there. good? That's I don't know. There, Rogan probably likes it though, so you better. This is how whack venison is. Deers die on the highway all the time. Ain't nobody like, yo, let's carve up a burger. What's the difference <laughs> between a venison and an elk? I think it's a different animal. I well, yeah, they're different animals. <laughs> how different? <laughs> how are they different? <laughs> What's the difference? A deer is more of like the f- <laughs> version of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think most people would agree. Yeah. You know, an elk is a boss ass animal. A deer is would be at like a pride march. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Deer do look mad graceful, yo. Prancing. Yeah. Deer be prancing. Cute with a little bunny tail. Yeah. Shaking that thing. <laughs> you know, a little cottontail bunny. All right, we got a pumpkin. 
Pumpkin slaps, yo. Son, pumpkin son, slaps, son, yo. Son, I thought that was white people. Son, I've been you, giving white people credit this whole time. What would you guys do in the fall time. without pumpkins? Yo, son, son, son yo. <laughs> son, off, <laughs> off that alone, y'all should have let them live, son. son Fuck. Son, son, can I, can I yo, be honest with you? Yo, white people soul food pumpkins. Can I be honest with they you? They soul no. fooded pumpkins. No, no. Can I be honest so with you, yo? Akash, can I be honest with you? Native American. That's the white pig is this pumpkin. <laughs> y'all did a lot with it, yo. Yo, ready? What color is sugar? Brown? I really threw a French in my Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to help you out with pumpkin. I thought pumpkin needed sugar. Nah, or sugar's white. Yeah, okay. Right? Sure. The Let's domino one is. <laughs> <laughs> right? They, they, maybe they ain't got domino back then, but I'm pretty sure it's some like, shit that well, damn, they just, kill black people with the very game they love, domino sugar. Ain't that <laughs> some shit? That's foul, yo. That's how That's they got them to grease the sugar. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just like that Jesus, they take something brown and make it white. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, everything's sweet. Y'all turn white. Yo, Sean King is the domino sugar <laughs> of, <laughs> of people. <laughs> yo, okay. Well, I was trying to make some correlation, but I'm not. I, yo, pumpkin is trash without sugar. It's trash without sugar. With sugar, it's amazing. Can I give you another example? Cinnamon. Wait, what is that word? <laughs> a cinnamon. 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 Yeah. Trash without sugar. Add the sugar. Unreal. Unreal. Take real <laughs> and then undo it. That's what you get when you add cinnamon to the sugar. But isn't sugar more of a Native American thing? No. no yo, Hawaiian, they kind of got some fucking fire food. Like, I kind of didn't realize that. America's. Yo, maple syrup, vanilla, turkey. These are all Native stop, American stop, foods. Stop, yo, maple stop. syrup, like sugar yo. Can't, sugar they don't even need your sugar, bro. Yo, that's not fucking syrup. Native American. That's peck a hole in a tree. Peanut butter. Oh shit! Nah, that's a yo, black dude. Yo, yo, yeah, yeah. what's uh, good, Mark, yo? Mark, relax. What's yo, good, George yo, Washington well, Carver? Uh, relax. He what's good, George Washington How is it George Washington carving peanuts. Native Americans nah, out nah, of history? Nah, that's nah, what he's nah. carving. Real talk. How peanuts. is it that George Washington Carver hasn't had a fucking movie made after him? Where's yet? Where's his statue? He needs a statue. They're gonna say, yo, he does need to say, we got a planter peanut. Why don't we got George Washington Carver on that shit? You got Aunt Jemima on the syrup. So we didn't put Aunt Jemima there. <laughs> put the Native American on the Aunt Yo, Jemima but syrup. Yo, real talk. Yo. Why did we put Aunt Jemima on the syrup? We know damn well Aunt Jemima didn't get the fucking syrup out of the tree. We need the Land of Lakes lady on the Aunt Jemima syrup. Bang! No, we don't. We need a fucking hummingbird. <laughs> or a woodpecker. But give them their credit, yo. They didn't invent that. You know how drunk they had to be to be sucking off a tree and they find some maple syrup? <laughs> they did it, though. Y'all didn't do it because y'all were busy drinking. Y'all had alcohol. They need something you have else. To, you have to admit, white people have been incredibly effective given our addiction to alcohol. We've been the most effective alcoholics. No. Yeah, Who's I just, better? Yeah, I just steal everything. Irish people aren't Yeah, but we got our yo. wits. <laughs> we got our wits together. Yeah, because your inhibitions are down, so now you're just, oh, let me just rob this motherfucker. Give me that. Okay. Give me that. <laughs> Give me that. All right, it helps you that And way. Irish people mad effective. At what? My fuckers can't even grow potatoes, fucking losers. Yo, son, how you can't son, grow potatoes? How you can't grow potatoes? That shit, like, they're like, Fuck we have got a potato famine. <laughs> did you try putting it in the ground? <laughs> hey, like, did you try planting a potato? That's like the first thing they teach us in elementary school. How to make a potato. <laughs> yeah. Son, how do the potatoes don't come out of the ground? <laughs> You're telling me it was too sunny? <laughs> Hold on, you tell me there was a time in fucking Great Britain where it was too dry and sunny? The most wet place on the fucking earth? Oh I don't believe this potato famine. Yeah. They were too drunk. Say what? They were too drunk. Too drunk to be effective, yo. But that's Irish. That's the whitest white. That's the whitest that's white. White. Yeah, that's, nah. tra that's translucent white. Nah, you don't think that. That's can... Sean King white. Mm. Sean King is Irish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what about the black Irish? Oh, that's a good point. Ooh, you haven't heard about them, have you? I haven't. What's that? A black drunk person? <laughs> Say what? Is that a black person who drinks? No, a lot? the black Irish, the Spanish Armada. They came to uh they came to Ireland and they made them black. <laughs> nah, that's the token you see at the same time. No, it's just it's St. literally Patty just an group. Irish person with like brown hair or something. It really like that, is. Right? They just call people with brown hair. That's how white Irish, Irish. is. <laughs> that brown hair made you black. <laughs> oh wow. Mark that's fact check me on that. That might be true though. Yeah, I'll look it up. There actually is an interesting correlation where like Irish slave owners that came over would give 
like slaves would get the last name of where they were from or they would get the name of where they were from. Yeah, sure. So Tyrone, Ireland is like one of the most, uh, it's like a wealthy part of Ireland back in the day that people used to come over. And that's why like a lot of black people are named Tyrone, allegedly. Oh, so Tyrone is a white name. A little yeah. cultural appropriation. That's a fire name. I don't care. <laughs> it is a, it is a fire <laughs> name. That shit is ours now. All right, what else we got? Um, people upset at Bill Simmons or some shit because there's not enough diversity or something? I think he said some shit. Like, they asked him why his hiring practices weren't more diverse, and he said something like, this is a business. I can't just give podcasts to anybody. But then, like, his son has a podcast or his daughter or some shit like that. Like, Yo, son, let me just tell all y'all that are complaining about this. When, we don't. We just see you as nerds. <laughs> like nerds don't have color to me. I, I just realized. Now listen, my boy Van is on there. Van shouts at Van, but he's not a uh, an employee of the Ringer. He has a podcast on the Ringer, right. and this was about the Ringer employee specifically. But if you work for Bill Simmons or you are Bill Simmons, you're just a nerd. So if you're a black nerd or a Chinese nerd or a Filipino nerd or a white nerd, whatever you are, you're just a nerd. And I thought. That nerds didn't care about diversity because I thought that they were just happy to have another person there. It didn't matter what race they were. <laughs> that being said, I don't know. Like, what are you supposed to do? I don't know. I always thought his writers were not diverse in the way they thought. It's always just the same type of person. Right. And that person, I think, tends to be white and liberal. But that was my main beef with Simmons was who he employed was just like cucks across the board. You just know? nerds. His rap critic is a white bitch. I can't think of a person this music is less for. Than white bitches? White bitches. Oh, my God. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I stand by that one. You know what I mean? Anyway, what else? What else we got? Okay, we got uh, Pablo Escobar's family sues 2 chains. This one's Yo, how shit. broke are the Escobars Ain't that, that you are idea? suing 2 chains For likeness rights violations. Because apparently they got his face on the restaurant or something like that. Oh, I, I thought it was just it was Escobar's tapas or whatever that shit was. They named the restaurant Escobar. And Stoppers. I think I also have his pictures of him. Yo, we got to have a conversation. If you made your money doing foul and illegal shit, you don't have the right to your likeness. Mm. I don't think you should. Because we were going through this when we were doing the, the statues, right? We're like, hmm. there's a statue that they took down in England, right? What was the guy's name? Uh, Edward Colston. Edward Colston, right? The guy who was trying to free slaves. No. This is this is one who he was a massive slave trader, right? But he also built the town of Brixton, Bristol, Bristol, whatever, some shit, right? So he has this statue for building the town of Bristol. But then people are like, "Yo, we gotta take it down." This guy made all his money doing slave trading, and we're like, "Yeah, actually, I'm with that," because if the if if you are known for your philanthropic endeavors, right? Mm -hmm. But the only reason you could do the philanthropy is because you did some foul shit to get the money. You can't be rewarded for the philanthropy. Like Escobar did mad philanthropy. He was building schools. He was building hospitals. He was building fucking soccer fields all over the place. But he did it by killing mad motherfuckers and selling drugs. So I'm not going to reward you for your philanthropy if you did it doing some foul shit. So if the Escobars, if you did some foul shit and motherfuckers want to make money off you, now you're upset? I'm wrong? Yeah, how's he not suing Kanye either? What did Kanye do? Life of Pablo. But yeah. was that Pablo Escobar? I think so. I thought it was Pablo was, Picasso. Yeah, no, I thought it was like the saint or some shit like that. Like Paul. Is, so no, I always thought it was Escobar. I thought it was assumed it was Escobar. Kanye's no. never. What does it have to do with, with Escobar in his life? The most authentic <laughs> thing about Kanye is he never pretends to be a gangster ever. There's no like doing like selling drug shit. There's no I'm catching so, body shit. Yo, but son, good thing they didn't sue Kanye then. So you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, Kanye. I just think that this, they, they got to be broke. That family got to be broke that you're worried about a fucking top of spot in Atlanta. Like really? You need the during Corona when he's probably making a thousand dollars a day. Yeah. You really suing that? You want that thousand dollars a day? Like yeah. get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Nah, I think I'm with you. I think I'm with you. It's kind of stupid, right? I just thought- like, I just, suck it up. Your dad was a piece of human garbage or your granddad or whatever it is. Like yeah. a horrible human being yeah. that murdered thousands of people. Like suck a dick. I don't know because the family hasn't done those crimes. So now but it's But the like, family's profiting off of the name. But it's his name they're yes. suing for. It's not- And their lifestyle is completely propped up by those crimes. They still got uh, mansions. They still got money. They still got all the, like every penny that they have that they're still spending now, yeah. all that money that he buried, that is blood money, yo. That is yeah. blood money. Yeah, so if we're going to be upset about statues up here, 
If we got statues of, you know, racists and shit, we want to tear them shits down? Tear down that, their fucking mansion. You got a point. Hey, all right, he technically could sue Kanye because Kanye said he called it Escobar or Pablo because it was Pablo Escobar who moved product and Picasso who moved art. And he was the two biggest movers of art and product. Shut up, Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to take a break for a second and uh, let y'all know real quick that we're going to be in Kansas City this weekend, man. Mark and I are going to be down there. Alex Mita got a little bachelor party action, so he not. But uh, what? No, no. Yeah, right. yeah. So uh, come on down. Come check Kansas City Improv. We added another show. So we had a third show on Saturday. We're there Friday and Saturday. Kansas City, anybody in that whole area, just come through, pull out. Uh, it's going to be the first time back on stage in months, man. I'm excited to see what the fuck's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Um, but also we're going to pay some bills right now. Uh, oh yeah. More shows up at the Andrew Schultz.com, but can't see this weekend. We're going to pay some bills right now, man. Blue chew. Shout out to blue chew, man. You got to love blue chew. Um, for those of y'all that are new here, blue chew is the best dick that you will ever have in your life. Okay. Not only does it make it hard, adds that control. Imagine your dick <coughs> feeling good while you're fucking and you don't have to nut. Okay, Alex claims it made his dick bigger. Is that mm. true, Alex? It did make it bigger. There we go. All right. So, bluechew.com. Okay. All you got to do is use our promo code flagrant. Okay. And then you get it for free. You're trying to have the best dick of your life. Give your girl the best dick of her life. Ladies, get your man to give you the best dick of your life for absolutely free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping when you use our promo code flagrant. Simple as that. Bluechew.com. You make sure you use our promo code flagrant and. You deliver the best dickings that you've ever given in your entire life. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. I don't. You have nothing to risk right here. Go try it out. Have some fucking fun. And now let's get back to the show. And we're back. Uh, did you guys see how Bubba Wallace uh, fumbled his 30 for 30? No. <laughs> <laughs> this guy had the perfect... The perfect storyline set up for an amazing 30 for 30. Okay. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All he had to do was drive around in a circle faster than other people. <laughs> Bruh. Right? I mean, Bubba I'm Wallace is the black NASCAR driver. He originally comes out with Black Lives Matter. He gets uh, he gets the Confederate flag taken down from all NASCAR events. Then uh, a noose ends up in his... Garage. They call it bit. garage. But just to clarify, garage is each uh, team gets their own section of the thing. Okay. Uh, and they call that a garage. So it's not the garage in his hometown. It. Uh, it's okay. at the venue. Got right. It. So which I think was set up, but we'll get there in a second. Uh, and then he goes out there and the entire NASCAR, uh, the stands, the all the other drivers, everybody roll his car up to the front of the lineup and they show this huge sign of solidarity. He's crying. It's just this beautiful moment. And then he comes in 14th. If he wins that race. Oh, my God. It's amazing. It's 30 for 30. Yeah. If he wins that race, yeah, thirty for fucking thirty, done. Amazing story. Fuck thirty for thirty. You get a cinema movie. You so get you, like a you might get a theaters. real movie. Yeah, played by Sean King. You got Sean King. <laughs> <laughs> but but Sean it, King being the guy that hangs the noose. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's the question. Um, I mean, it's just this perfect story, and like. I don't. I think the noose was set up. You mean no way to prove it, or there's no way to prove it? Who do you think would do it? I think somebody who is either on his team. I don't think the person who did it did it for like intimidation purposes. I think the person who did it, go go. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, okay, I think the person who uh, did it did it for PR purposes. Mm-hmm. Be- I can say, I can see you saying NASCAR would do this to say, yo, the stereotype of our fan base, of our drivers, is they're all racist fucking yeah. rednecks. So let's do some real foul shit. Let's set it up. But then the reaction to it is. will be so open minded and accepting of this black driver. Ooh. People will see, yo, not all of our fans are like that. Not all of our drivers are like that. Like so that. if your reason for shutting out NASCAR is some white racist shit, yep. maybe you'll be a little bit more open to it and be like, oh, like they're that. not, they're not all bad. Yep. Very Which is smart. ironic. They're having and, to fight for that. And but. what what <laughs> <laughs> and what was the picture that we saw? All Every, the everybody on the screen at the top of their lungs. Black Lives Matter on the green. Son, right? That shit gave me chills just then when you said it. Bro, it was beautiful. It's a moment, bro. And then he fucked it up coming in 14th place. Hey, don't you just crash the car? Just 
Go for number one. Foot on the pedal the whole fucking time. I mean, just pretend. You know what they should have done to motivate him? Somebody should have put a siren on their hood behind him, and that motherfucker <laughs> would have come in first. No question, yo. Yo. Talk about fighting for your life. You know what I mean? Nah, but they should have treated it like Kobe's last game. Just let him win. Let him win. Like, outlap everybody by, like, four laps. Just, like, kill it. That's what they should have done. I'll be honest, I'm so c- competitive. I don't even let my girl win, so I don't know if I do that <laughs> shit. Like, like, but uh, but I hear you, man. Like, just I don't know, dog. These people are so competitive. But don't you wish she fucking won? That would have been the perfect oh, message. Yeah. God, they yo. put the news. I'm gonna defy the news. I'm gonna go out there. I win. All of the NASCAR fans are out there in support. Everybody's cheering. All the other drivers are cheering. He's shaking the champagne. He's pouring it all over the fucking place. Bruh. You think he was just he just got too emotional early on? You can't cry before some shit and then expect to go out there and kill it. But it's mm. driving. Why are we acting like this is difficult? It's probably why they they probably why they put the noose in his thing like to rile him up. <laughs> and it just uh, didn't work. And then all. everybody fucked it up by by accepting him. He's like, God damn, yeah, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So you think they put it there for motivational yeah, purposes? They tried to light the there. fire under him right before the race. Like, mm, let's oh, get him. <laughs> Tricky choice of words, light the fire. <laughs> 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 Bro, this is interesting. Yeah. What if it wasn't a noose at all? What if it was like a bungee cord or some shit? Like, what if it was just something for the car, and then someone just forgot to like pack it away, <laughs> and then he showed up the next day? He was like, "The fuck is this? These intimidation hanging kind of low. Let's just throw <laughs> it back up in the- <laughs> yeah. And then all the people in his team are like, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, "Damn it! I, I didn't realize you were going to come so early on race day. I was going to put the. I'm not going to say anything." Like, it is, yo, it's to the point right now, if you're white, you can't even buy rope, B. Bruh. Like, who would really, re- remember that time where white people did that tiki torch shit and you yeah. couldn't have a fucking Hawaiian barbecue in the back of your house? Yeah. Without people thinking you're a racist? Yeah. The fact that you're having Hawaiian barbecues. White people love Hawaiian barbecues. <laughs> nah, but sometimes you just got them shits to keep away mosquitoes. Ah, gotcha. Yes. That too. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you call them? Mosquitoes? <laughs> <laughs> they are black and annoying. Sucking <laughs> <laughs> money and blood out of the system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, but yeah, I, you I can kill them and nobody cares. So. <laughs> I thought I know you were to get in that. Come on, <laughs> you were to get in that. Come on, Come on, on you pussy. Gag nut. Gag nut. Gag nut. Gag nut. I hate him. What? I, don't, I got scared. I don't know what to say. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, isn't that a is, <laughs> <laughs> Come back. <laughs> so, wait, what were we even talking about? Who knows? Oh, yeah. So, that was the Bubba Wallace thing. That thing yeah. would have been perfect. Bruh. It would have been the perfect fucking story. How do you not risk it all? Like, even if you go down, like, getting, you yeah. know, pulled out, you got to go for so, it, right? Oh, if he, yo, if he crashed and di- that's the greatest 30 for 30. If he crashed ever, and died? Ever. Yo, think about that 30 for 30. That shit is like Ford versus Ferrari, but with higher stakes. Whoa. Mm. So, but what would it mean? What do you think it would mean? Like, if he died, do you think the message would be prolonged? Or do you think it, someone would look like they bumped him off the track on purpose? I'll tell you what. Some of these white women wouldn't have been getting the same amount of attention. You know what I mean? Son, that's <laughs> a great point. Distracted from the BLM cause. That's a fucking great point. Wait a minute. How on earth was he not trying to cut everyone off? You don't want to be the person that crashes <laughs> you know, the yeah, black guy's right car on right the up. day of the Black Lives <laughs> Matter race. Yeah. That's why I think they put the noose in. So he'd drive more aggressive and they should have let him win. We got to have a up. talk with Bubba, son. You need to win that one. That was your race but to win. But he's just not good enough. You put it, uh, you pointed out yesterday that NASCAR is an expensive sport. Like it's hard to get into that. That's why there's not many black drivers. Right. Because it's like you have to start early and with like different cars and go-karts yeah. and all that type of shit. And it's like, like hockey. It's also an expensive sport yeah, to get into. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we were saying there's certain sports where like the barrier to entry is like wealth. You know, it's like there's yeah. not a lot of black swimmers. It's not because black people can't swim, right? It's just like you need to have a fucking pool in your so backyard. or you're Black going people to- can't swim because their parents don't do this to them. Okay. Like, did you this see this is- video? Yeah, I don't know if, know if you've seen this before, but it's the uh, Casey Anthony swim school. And uh, <laughs> so here's a video of this. But like, this is crazy. I mean, does it feel like we wrapped up that last section? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
the case, there's this thing, there's this thing that I've seen before. This is not the first time I've seen it, Al. But it's a technique that white people, not just white people, but people do with their toddlers when they have pools in their backyard. White. And they essentially teach the toddler before they can talk or anything that if they fall into the water to spin themselves over onto their back so that they don't drown in the pool. And they can spin themselves over the back and then just kind of like float there. And that's what happens to these kids. And it's a school where you just toss your fucking kid in the water and then it magically flips over and now it just floats. So the thing is a lot of people have these pools in their backyard and they're so fucking selfish. They're so fucking selfish and self-absorbed that they won't put a fence around the pool because they think it's ugly. Wow. That they'd rather teach their kid to swim at two months old <laughs> than just put some blockade on your fucking pool to affect the house. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Do you see people, you're like, you're from Florida. Do you see people with pools that did this? Yeah, yeah. They put a blockade? Yeah. Thank God. But what does the fence have to do with anything? So what you would do is if you put the blockade around the pool, you could lock the fence and then the kid couldn't go into the but pool. Ah. The idea is if a kid does this, then he just like learns how to swim. Is exactly. Yeah. I ain't age. risking this shit. Yo, this is this is. Yo, so, honestly, I'd be terrified to have a pool with a kid, bro. Son, Wouldn't you be terrified to have a pool with a kid? Are white parents with water like Asian parents with math and spelling? Like, what do you this, mean? This is yeah, we we ain't fucking. You're drilling it into them yeah. Yeah. at a young age. That's wild, son. Yeah, but I actually I think that's a natural reflex. I think babe, like toddlers just do that shit. Yes. So I don't even know why you have to have a school for it. So you're saying that, well, then what happens to all the toddlers that drown? Why ain't they do it? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Like, I'm pretty sure there's like an, I don't think you teach Maybe you got to make sure they do it the first time. And I, then once they do it, they learn. I guess. Yeah. I mean, how terrifying is this? This Bro, has got to be traumatic. makes my stomach turn to watch. <laughs> and then she's like snapping her fingers by his head. Like, keep looking at my hand. Yeah. <laughs> don't drown. Also, like, why'd you have to get out of the pool to throw him? Like. You should have been in the water already. Right. Fuck, just get right. Right. <laughs> like she fucking RKO. When would a kid drop pool? into the water like that? Like a kid <laughs> would just fall in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just the more extreme right. version, I guess. Yeah, Getting thrown in there. Yo, why is Mia Khalifa trending? That's really interesting. Hmm. She says trending with I have a black husband. So probably she said some racist shit, but she's trying to cover it up with. Can't really see it. From Mia Khalifa opinion. only did porn for. I hate this bitch though. Yeah. I only did porn for only did porn for three months. Oh my god. Uh, listen, here's the thing about porn. It's very similar to AIDS. You <laughs> do it once, or you have a little bit of it. You have you got it. that shit. That's it. Yeah. You do your porn. That's what you got. You get your your video leaked. That's a private video. That doesn't count. Mm. Okay. You sign up to get paid to fuck a stranger for money. That's on you forever. Mm. Simple as that. Mm. Now, I think we live in a society that's become much more comfortable with porn because so many sex tapes have been leaked. Yeah, yeah. And it's almost like a, a way of like doing PR. And I think you're going to see a lot of these people who do porn actually cross over. You see Lana Rhodes. She's, you know, like a YouTuber now. She dates um, uh, Mike uh, from uh, what's it called? Logan Paul's podcast. Uh, what is it called? Impulsive. Impulsive, the Impulsive podcast. And uh, Mia Khalifa's on um, the new Rami season, I think. Really? Isn't she? I'm not sure. I think so. But mm -hmm. Sasha Gray did the same thing. Sasha Gray did it. So as 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 porn becomes way more normalized, you'll see a lot of porn stars kind of like crossing over because fame is just fame. Yeah. There used to be a time where like being a TV star wasn't as valuable as being a movie star. Do right. you remember that? Like, yeah. oh yeah, he does TV. It yeah. was actually looked at as like a step down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you went from movies to TV? Now TV is way more popular than movies, so those people are way more popular. So I think fame is just becoming fame, and if you're famous for porn or if you're famous for this, it will almost be looked at as a kind of similar thing. Yeah, I can see yeah. that happening. That being said, like, there's a stigma to that porno shit, B. <laughs> So you think that's the thing about always going to be there? I think it depends on the type of porn. Like if you did like some like sensual porn, maybe not. But the one where like there's just like your saliva everywhere and there's like tears and there's just like cum all over your face. Like I love this kid, Mike. Shout out to this kid, Mike, man. He's got the fifth vital. He has a book out. He's got a really interesting story. You know, he was addicted to, I think it was opiates and uh, he, he beat that addiction and then he went out to LA and he does his podcast with uh, Logan Paul and he's like really funny on it and he's really good and um 
But just poor, he dates this girl who's a really famous porn star named Lana Rhodes. And this poor guy, anytime he tweets anything, George Floyd, RIP George Floyd, we need justice for black lives. There is some guy who responds to the tweet <laughs> with his girl just getting cum talk. <laughs> it's every single time, dude. It doesn't matter what he's, it could be the most supportive, beautiful. We need to look out for the environment and we need to recycle. And it'd be like, she seems to be recycled. And there's just cum all over his girl. And it's just Happy fucking. Day, Mom. Look at the unborn babies on this girl's face. <laughs> And it's just, I feel, I feel so bad for the dude because that's his girl. You know what I mean? Like he loves that girl and he got to deal with this every single time. Oh my God. That's so, so funny. That's yo. rough. So would you guys? Nah, never. You couldn't date a porn star? No. Could you? Obviously not, yo. Mark? No. Nah. You want to test it? You want to see, you want to drive the Formula One? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, that's a lot. I'm but it's a lot of maintenance involved with a Formula One car. I didn't you know say I mean? you want to own it. You know what I'm saying? But if Ferrari goes, you want to try this Formula One car, you'd be like, I got to. I see how it yeah. feels. You know I, I mean? got to see how it feels. Yeah, the Richard Petty driving experience. They have that shit in Florida. They do. Yeah, you can drive a NASCAR. Well, you drive a NASCAR. The Mia Khalifa driving experience. No, nah, not Mia Khalifa, bro. Not, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Sorry, good name. No, not happening, bro. Uh-uh. Son, did you see this Ja Rule commercial? Man, Ja Rule's the goat, bro. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's this guy's hilarious, man. Ja Rule the goat, bro. You know? Pop Priesto's got the best motherfucking Ja Rose, Ja Rose. You ever f***ing ate your life so good. Take one little thing to You got to have Peter's. Peter's. Pop Priesto's. Peter's. <laughs> this sucks, <laughs> man. I'm going to just give you a rundown of some of my favorites. They got Taziki. Ta- ta- <laughs> <laughs> I like the uh, one on. Well, uh, yeah, whatever, but it's good. I, 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 <laughs> that is so good. So, so pause. So when this came out, 50 Cent came out. He's like, see, if you beef with me, this happens. 50 become a kind of corny to me, bro. It's like, eventually you got to grow up from the beef shit, man. Like, That's funny. You used to praise this motherfucker. <laughs> I did when I was younger, and I think it was more enticing. Yeah. But like... You're 50 years old. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to grow up, bro. You got TV shows out there. Like, he's so good at it, though. He is, but he fucked up here. He didn't do his research. Yeah. So, this Ja Rule shit is a show that he was pitching. Yeah. Where he uses, uh, he goes to these kind of struggling businesses and he uses his whatever celebrity cachet to like make promos for them and try to build up the business. Kind of like almost like a business rescue type thing. So, 50 Cent gave him all the promo that he wanted. And to be honest, mm. the show on its own sucks. You need that kind of promo of people being like, yo, laugh at this guy. Yeah. And I think they did it for that reason. They made a corny promo in the same. I don't know if you guys, uh, if you're not from New York City, but you probably have your own local advertisements as well. But like in New York City, we have these horrible local advertisements that some companies leaned into how bad they were. And then they became... Uh, these like uh, I don't know catchphrases. Ah yo, digital cable. Yeah. Like you had the uh, Carmel, one eight hundred say eight 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 whatever. Oh, that might Damn. be a different one. But like yeah, but no, nah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and like they do that purposely. They make it super duper cheesy. Yeah. just so people talk about it, and that's what you want for a commercial. You just want attention. Exactly. To that product. So shout to Ja for effective. being able to pivot because Fifty did make him a joke, so he just leaned into leaned into the I'm joke. A joke. What are you going to do? I can't be cool. So let me lean into the cheesiness. And who better to give me publicity for that than the guy who made me cheesy in the first place? All, real talk. If you know what somebody's moves are, you can manipulate them and they can be your tool. Yeah. And I'm not saying Ja has the wits to do that right now. He did it this time. It might have happened organically. Maybe he did. But if I'm Ja and I know 50 likes to make a big thing about anything, anytime I do anything that looks corny, I will do corny things that I can profit from so that 50 calls them out and then I end up making some bread off of it. So it's like, yeah, use that person as a tool if you know how their actions are. And if he knows that you're using him as a tool, he'll stop using you as a tool and then all of a sudden, yep. he's ignoring you. He's off your back. Yep. So you guys heard about the poison milkshake shit? At- I knew that shit was fake, bro. You yeah, did? Off dog. rip you did? Who poisons the milkshake? It just seemed weird to me too. Off that's, rip. that's funny because I believed it because why would you suspect your milkshake be poisoned in the first place? It's just the next. Like something you have to look at it or see something or it has to taste different for you to even suspect that. I don't know if it was immediate. I think immediately I might have. But by the next day, I was like, no, nah, I don't think so, man. So apparently these New York City cops, two of them, I think, said they all got shakes at Shake Shack and two of them were poisoned. 
they tasted like bleach was in them or something like mm. that. Became the story. By the next day, I think they said they weren't poisoned, I think. But then now, apparently, they made up the, the whole thing. The order was placed, I think, via app. Or something so like that. So you wouldn't even so know, they don't who, they know were. who they're making the shakes oh, for. Shit. And then there was one other thing that was, uh, oh yeah, when they said the shakes tasted funny, they told the manager of Shake Shack, they got vouchers for free food, free drinks, they got like an apology. So this is just some, this is some Karen shit or whatever you Let's call it. Let's talk about these cops, man. Because these fireworks Yo, that's been fireworks, going on, bro. son. What what's, you think the firework about? thing is? So the conspiracy is that the cops are letting illegal fireworks happen all over the country as to show like hey we have value and if you don't acknowledge our value we'll just let chaos happen like a form of chaos happen. so they're up so people are upset that it's noisy at night yes okay if i see a single latin <laughs> complain about it being noisy at night <laughs> If there's a single one, yeah. oh, that's man. a that's a more New York thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, I, people don't read that doesn't resonate. I don't, I don't think so. Not down south. How can some a group of people with such strong unions be so bad at negotiating? Like you think this is what it's gonna take for you to? We're gonna be like, I know they're killing black people and that's fucked up, but it's just so noisy. Let's just let them keep doing what they're doing. Yo, that's like, you think that's the deal we're going to take? Like, oh, my God, they're letting chaos run wild. It's loud. Yeah. You know, they had a meeting where they were like, how do we show how important and valuable we are to the community? <laughs> <laughs> Noise complaints. <laughs> that's where you come in. That's where you're the most used. Yeah, I can't buy it. The unions are too strong to think some shit like this. It's poor negotiations. So, I think it's motherfuckers setting off fireworks and they know no one's going to stop them. There is something to it, though. So it's like, okay, um, go. My in my building, like I'm in one of those old people Facebook groups where everybody complains and shit like that. So yeah. there's a this annoying lady that she complains about everything. She went to the front desk and she's like, "Why are they allowing these fireworks to happen?" The front desk, the front desk guy told her that the police said to him verbatim, um, "These are all misdemeanors at best, and we're not policing those at the at the moment." Mm. So they have prioritized certain crime, I guess, with you know the political climate and you know civil climate of things in america so they actually are looking the other way on lower crimes so right. there is some truth to it but i don't know if they're doing it to spite people i guess what yeah. what you're saying is that or what some the conspiracy is saying is that the cops themselves are lighting these things off no no, no, no. they're uh, just letting it happen i've heard somewhere that's like they're giving uh fireworks to like low income oh word i haven't heard that because people are like these are like thousand dollar fireworks like they're massive happening everywhere like yeah again what do they think do you think the the low income people are going to be like guys it's okay just keep killing black people i just can't this is ruining my property value the noise i think what they're hoping (laughs) i I think what they're hoping is either people start getting injured or fires start happening because now fires start happening oh we can Look at all these people running wild on the streets, looting, And fires. then the firefighters are even bigger heroes. Possibly, but it's, it's a little something weird about it. Yo, even, where have the firefighters been? They chilling. They are chilling, right? Yeah. Ain't nobody saying defund the firefighters. Yeah, why would you? They got a lot of uh, trucks. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't kill nobody. Say what? They don't kill anybody. Yeah, that's true. We're not <laughs> upset about the misuse of tax dollars here. This isn't yo, but this isn't the, the no police officers' who tea was, party. Who was no fire? Key. Who was fire hosing all those people back in the day? Oh shit! Mm. No one ever talked about that. Mm. That's true. Nobody ever talked about how fun that shit probably <laughs> was. <laughs> son, you never son, go to the carnival, keep, play that game with keep, the water. Keep it a buck. <laughs> keep it a buck, son. You been, son, Keep it a buck. Stop. Keep it a buck. <laughs> Keep it a buck, right? Imagine you're a racist, right? Yeah. Imagine you're a racist. You're a black guy who's racist against white people, right? Okay. Imagine you you work for an all black fire department. Okay. Right? Now you got these white people that are that are out here uh running about uh causing civil disobedience. <laughs> running them right? all right. And you've been going to the carnival your whole life playing that stupid game where you shoot the water gun into the clown's <laughs> mouth. Yeah. <Okay>. Right? <laughs> right? Your whole life you've been oh playing that God. game. And then all of a sudden, you oh hear the fire God. bell. Neater, neater, whatever that shit is, right? You hop down the pole, and then your fire chief is going, he goes, you know what we're going to do? We're going to spray down them whites. Okay. Oh Are you a little excited? You hate the whites. <laughs> 
Son, without question, yes. You cannot He's wait. like, without question, I can't Would lie. you forgive all police brutality if there was a day where cops just lined up and black people just got to fucking... <laughs> 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 Is that a fair trade? Is nah. that reparations? I can't give a bad It's one. tempting, nah. though. You gotta it, think it would about be that. Fun. So it would everybody help. gets to spray a cop. <laughs> so High powered so hose. Hold on, hold on. Not that bitch ass Shawshank yo, Redemption shower. I'm not, talking about the fucking. Yo, yo, yo. We gotta also keep in mind it's not a garden hose. Nah, bruh. That shit got some Hadouken behind yeah, it, bro. <laughs> like, it's going to move you, right? Yeah. Hopefully no one died from that whole shit, right? Well, I'll find out. Please, I'm Google. sure they did. No. <laughs> no. Because here's the thing about the water hose, right? Like, the dog sicking, that's so fucking foul, right? Because you're, like, doing permanent injury. With it. <laughs> but the fucking... The fucking... The, the water... <laughs> that shit was refreshing. <laughs> you think like, it's a hot-ass summer you day. They were like... You li- <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's called flagrant too bro yeah. you don't hey, think yo. you don't think a little bit you get hose the fuck down but you've been marching <laughs> it's hot as fuck and the f- at first when the hose so hit you've been you, sitting in not being served this sit- whole time you know, ac back then yo. you know what i mean it's scorching hot you in a full suit martin luther king told you wear your full suit you're like we, we couldn't do this in some gym shorts <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? You suit and tied up, and that water come hits at first, and you just you don't think a little bit. You just like that fucking. I need some water by any means necessary. You don't think a, you get a little flash of that flash dancers thing where the girl gets the. <laughs> 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 no, it's like the game when you're a kid and the sprinkler's going on. You try to run and get, move out the move way out of the sprinkler. The- <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You don't think there's a little bit of refreshing. I don't know. The South is hot. The South is hot. You don't think there was some nice firemen that weren't racist who like didn't spray exactly on you? They kind of like sprayed it up in the air and let it trickle down. I mean, from the video, I ain't seen none of that. But if there were that, some of them. Oh my god. Okay, let's rephrase it. Yes. If you had to get attacked by a government authority figure, mm. would it be? Obviously, police, they have rubber bullets, regular bullets. They have, like, the batons and that kind of shit. The army, they got weapons. They got tear gas. They got all all that. Mm, Park yes. ranger. Park yeah. ranger. Park ranger. Park Coast ranger. guard. Coast guard. Or. Coast guard got guns. What you mean? Coast guard got guns, and they <laughs> oh, guard the coast. <laughs> the oh, fuck you? How do you think we Yo, guard the coast with? Fishing? Harsh language. <laughs> Son, Get I'll away! I thought maybe some buckets, you know what I mean? Son. I thought they were doing a bunch of ALS challenges out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> throwing buckets of water at each other. Son, all I'm saying is if you had to choose a form of punishment from a government agency, getting sprayed by the hose gotta be the but one. How, nah, man, that shit gotta put out house fires. Say what? House on fire. It's gotta be strong enough to put out a house. Motherfucking forest fires. Son, that, didn't Martin Luther King say himself, I feel like I'm integrating my people to a burning house? So the fireman was like, we got y'all. <laughs> that was good, yo. That was masterful. Son, because you had to know history for that, that one. Masterful. You had to know history. That's uh, why they brought the fucking hoses. <laughs> Come on. Oh, fuck. Son. Oh, my God, yo. You don't think. This flagrant, too. I know it is. Shit. <laughs> You don't think? We gotta go, yo. We All gotta right, we have gotta fun go. with it. No, I'm not saying leave. I'm saying we gotta go. This is what we do here. Oh, this is what we, we do go. here. Okay, so a shake a shack. Obviously, they made them up. Cops stop that shit, man. And look at cops making it up with something that reinforces the stereotype of cops. You might as well say they fucking <laughs> yeah. poison your donuts, yeah. you fat motherfuckers. <laughs> you couldn't get a protein style burger? I'm saying, yo. Yo, they fucked up the collard green on my lettuce wrap <laughs> burger. You know what I mean? Apparently, <laughs> apparently, there was no, I can't find any deaths from the hoses, so. That's well, that's good. what's up, yo. Yeah, so we good then. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't think maybe it was a couple of protesters said there was a fire? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well. I see it. There's Puerto Rican kids in my neighborhood that play in the fire hydrant every day. Thank you. They don't seem like they're in pain. That, w- that happened in, uh, what was it, Do the Right Thing? They When it was hot? Crank that bitch open. Yeah, yeah. the end of holes and all the range is falling down. Like... Seems I don't like know fun. what that is, but that's true. You never saw it's, that movie? It's a little different than a Petronas. Disney movie with Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> With Laboof? Yeah. Yo. The goat, yo. The goat, Young bro. Goat. My man, what's Laboof up to right now? <laughs> he could what's tell my us man Shia Laboof up to? 
I'm not saying anybody should do this, but now is the time to poison a cop because they've been completely discredited. Ow. <laughs> ow. 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 Throw me funny grip. Ow. What's up? Keep that in. Ow. Keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> finally. Finally. <laughs> Al is on board with the flagrancy. Mark the time. Oh, no. Al got on board with the flagrancy. Al got on board. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yo, that is a funny take, though. Like, if you were to poison a cop now, nobody would believe you because it's crime. <laughs> Wolf with that shit. Yo. Oh, man. Yo, y'all seen they let the cop off Which on one? bail? Which one? The One of the guys that killed George oh, Floyd. Yeah. Oh, he oh, just had yeah. Lowe's or whatever? The one that looked like Joe Budden, they let off. <laughs> <laughs> Son, they let off the Joe <laughs> Budden <laughs> cop that killed George Floyd, Nigga bro. thought it was Joe Budden. You know how I got black people like that? <laughs> Son, how the fuck they let off the Joe Budden cop that oh, killed George wow. Floyd? That is Hilarious. He, oh, what's George man. Floyd? What's George Floyd? What's Joe Budden's hit song again? What is that shit? Pump it up. Pump don't it even, up. Don't that guy look like if Joe Budden and Rory had a baby together? Like oh, he's mad pale. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, freckles. Don't he got freckles? Yo, come on, dog. That's fucked up. You can't let off the Joe Budden cop, bro. You saw the whole video with him. What he was he doing? He was just hanging out with his Oreos, and the lady was like, "What? Why are you do? What are you doing here?" He was like, "I'm just shopping." <laughs> it's like mad blase about it. The whole thing's kind of a weird interaction. I don't really know. Yo, someone told us. Yes, sir. I think it was Robbie. Was it Robbie? Or was it you? Someone said that was his third day on the job. Yeah, I think yeah. he was like really new. I got to double check that, but I'm pretty sure. And he's, he's, he's literally in training. Yeah. It's like, fuck. Yeah, that's 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 a sucky situation. I'm not right trying to there. absolve him of any responsibility. Absolutely not. But it's like, I oh was trained. God. You're supposed to follow like follow your what's it called the orders of your supervisor exactly. or your yeah. higher up or whatever yeah. it is and didn't one of them keep asking was it him or the asian dude shouldn't we take our knee off his neck should you take your knee off his neck there's somebody who asked like four times like should you take your knee off his neck and oh, like, asians was, don't be fucking no but I, that was one of the authority cops. bro <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was one of like the uh, bystanders i thought one of the cops oh, said it maybe oh. i'm wrong I don't know, bro. But we got to talk to that Joe, Joe Button cop, bro. Because <laughs> I don't understand why that Joe Button cop would have let that happen. And why he would be out there with Joe Button's beard. <laughs> this guy. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? This guy For crazy. real. Doesn't it look like someone, like Joe Button's beard looked like someone cleaned a barber shop with it. <laughs> Doesn't it, it, it look like they, they use that shit to sweep a barber shop? <laughs> Just no purpose whatsoever. <laughs> Yo, pull up a recent picture of Joe Budden because I don't know. I remember the clean look. I just don't get why this dude was walking out like so arrogant. Like regardless of whether he deserves all yeah, the hate. Yeah, he was too comfy. Like you know people that's hate what, you. That's what weird to me. You walk that's around. That's what was weird to me. No, he you can wear no, a mask. You're like, yo, yo, you're he inside a store. You're supposed mask, to yo. wear a mask. Dude. But he's intentionally like not wearing a mask, not wearing sunglasses. Like if I'm him, go around, but like cover up a little, right? Yeah, it's the audacity. You're just like throwing it. Yeah, in that's face a good that point. You know I'm surprised he off. didn't, because he could easily put the mask on, sh cover who and he avoid is. it. Yeah. And also, the lady comes up to talk to you. Like, if someone's like, "Hey, who are you?" I'd just be like, "Nope," and I would dip. Yeah. Yeah. The way he answered, he was like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, that's me." Yeah, like, like it was, it was almost like a weird sense of like, "Yeah, yeah. I'm proud." Like, of that's exactly. how I he recognize. Well, I'm like, comfortable. Yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah. His energy was like, "I wish a motherfucker would." Like, I wish someone would like step to me or say something. He's like, "That's how it like seems almost." Yo, yeah, that was odd. That's a little weird, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Like not wearing a mask. Bare minimum, just wear a mask. Bare minimum, you wear the mask. Or you shave your beard. Why do you want the smoke? Why do you want to look like Joe Budden? It's an uncanny. Yo, get it up. It's an uncanny. No, it's it's an uncanny resemblance, bro. Oh my god, this guy. Come on. <laughs> Get it up. You got to get it up, bro. <sighs> I don't no, know no, why. that's Joe Budden. But that's not even the one nah, that I'm that talking about. that cop do look like Joe Budden. Huh? That cop looks like Joe Budden. The cop looks like Joe Budden. Yeah. Is that the cop or Joe Budden? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you want the cop or you want Joe Budden? I want the cop, the cop and Joe, and Joe Budden, Budden next side. to each other. Just uh. Google Joe Budden cop. They killed George <laughs> Floyd. Google, did Joe Budden kill George <laughs> Floyd? Google that. You're going to find some shit. Oh, my God. If this shit comes up, it's, it's gonna, gonna come up. Wild. They're the same. Nah, I didn't. <laughs> what came up? Just the main cop who did it. No, oh. but we could pull it. Out. Shit, what is it? So oh, the guy yeah. in the left. Yeah. Yo, the main cop who did it. What's his first name? Derek. Derek Chauvin. Chauvin. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, that's what? it. Where, where are you going? No, Derek Joe Budden. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reach. It's a reach. Got it. Yeah, let's got move it. on. Let's move on. All right, we're moving on. Yeah. Um, all right, let's wrap this up, Akash. Anything else we got to talk about? Yo, Alex, anything you got the topic list on us? Let's take oh. a look. Okay. Okay, everybody getting corona in Florida. Mark, you got any explanation? You fucking retards. Oh, let's talk about that. Yeah, bro. Let's no, talk I about gotta, I gotta that, go. Mr. Guys who don't think this is real. Yeah, they're trying to cancel all the free states, bro. That's what they're doing. Interessante. They're, they're trying to they're trying to make all the free states, all the liberated states, the states with real American patriots. <laughs> they're trying to paint them like they're negligent. This is like, honestly the best thing. I'm serious. If you do not want Trump to be elected, let these motherfuckers go maskless. Why would you not? Just okay, you guys who t- believe in Trump tend to be the mask inhibits my freedom. Right. Somehow clothes don't do the same thing, but the mask inhibits your freedom. Wear your mask, give each other corona, don't vote in November. Like yep. if you are liberal, you should love this. Why are no. you complaining about these people? You're mm. making a good ass point. They're giving son. it to each other. They're not giving it to you. You're wearing your mask. You're a d- social distancing. Who gives a fuck? Let me mm-hmm. ask you this question. Why are we complaining though? about this? Akash. Yeah. Do you think it's possible that if we're getting into conspiracy world that the Democrats want to rig the election with mm. with uh, electronic voting or mail-in voting because then they can send way more votes in than they would be people. Why the Democrats as opposed to the Republicans? I think in order for Trump to win or Republicans in general to win, we were talking about this yesterday, less people have to vote. Yeah, because only like old people are going to be the ones with not shit to do and go out there and vote. Yeah, so like um, I know how important voting is, but I don't. I'm not, I don't. I don't, don't want to go nowhere. Are you a citizen though? <laughs> 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 a good question. I should check. But I ain't trying to go nowhere and vote. wait in line, son. Son, wait in line. Shouldn't we encourage all people? I ain't to waiting vote, in a line though? unless it's Jordan's at the end of that bitch. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Oh, like, are you guys voting today? Today is election day. Man, I'm see, voting. I didn't even know. I voted. I don't even know if I'm registered. Where I'm registered. Did you? Yep. For who? Cornucopia. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he's bullshit. I, I voted for, for what? Con- I knew he's just- I, I voted for what? Colin it's Cornucopia. A, uh, Democratic primary. Democratic and then primary. For also the Tulsa, like some lower Oklahoma election stuff. Uh, elections. <laughs> so, <laughs> nah, for real. You I know did, who won the primary. Is yeah, like, but it's still like there still are other a, people on the There's ballot. a lot of people on a thing, on a ballot. Like bro, other other positions? Uh, bro, yeah. Drew is such an asshole. <laughs> this, this poor girl calls yesterday. Oh, boy. She calls and we're in the middle of like writing this fucking piece. And then she calls. She's like, hi, I just want to call to see if you're voting tomorrow in the Democratic uh, primary election. I uh, just want to spread the word. Maybe if you'd vote for our candidate, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to vote, but I'm voting on Wednesday. And she goes, uh, well, unfortunately, in your district, you can only vote on Tuesday. So I'd encourage you to vote then. Literally drags on his conversation for 45 minutes with this girl <laughs> going, no, 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 but it's on Wednesday. <laughs> so you why'd got, you do that? Also vote on Wednesday. And this girl, instead of like debating why her candidate should get votes, she's just going back and forth like, I really <laughs> think it's Tuesday. <laughs> but she wasn't sure, though. Such a dick. And she eventually just hangs up the phone and he goes, all right, guess it's Tuesday. If you're going to waste my time, I'm going to waste your Think time. How is she, she wasting get your call. time? She wanted me to vote for a Niv Patel. But she's just <laughs> making you aware was that it's Indian? election no. Yeah, it was an Indian. Oh, Look, that's the bone I got to pick with you. Okay, <laughs> Yo, don't pick that. Who yeah. watched that where you point that? Right? Son. Son. Okay. Yo, that's a two hour long bone you were waiting Son. to pick. Son. <laughs> oh my Son. God. I got a bone to pick with you and all Indians. All right. Well, it's really That'd not be all because I wish you fucking would go at the Indian <laughs> candidate. Yo, so it's not this Indian Patel guy. It's John Kapoor. Have you heard of him? Nah. This is a motherfucker. I don't trust him though. His name is John. Well, here's the thing. He's, I guess, from India, comes here, and uh, he's like one of the people that's responsible for the uh, fentanyl crisis in America, son. I was watching 60 Minutes on it. Mm-hmm. Son, this is an evil motherfucker, bro. I believe it, man. He calls himself John. I don't trust no fucking Indian. Break it, break John it down. Kapoor, get the fuck out of here, yo. So this, so this motherfucker, what he did is he um, essentially, I don't know if he owns fentanyl or whatever the fuck it was. You can look it up. But what he did is he got out these like these people who sell uh, or basically like, kind of like bribe doctors to prescribe certain medication. Mm-hmm. So they're pharmaceutical reps. Yeah, that's what they do. So I guess he represented fentanyl or own fentanyl or mm-hmm. whatever it is. But he set up this whole representative team to get doctors to prescribe fentanyl. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
and he would reward the doctors that prescribed it That's and prescribed it more. Yep. And he put them on these like speaking tours or whatever like that where they get money to speak because you can't pay them directly, but you only spoke if you prescribed the fentanyl. And he would have data analytics of how much that he was prescribing to the people and he would only continue to reward them if they upped and increased the amount of fentanyl he was prescribing per person. Wow. So, and those people and those doctors were told, and if you do not, Continue, you're only giving this person five milligrams or micrograms or whatever it is, up it to 10. They mm. need to have more. He literally forced addiction through doctors on these people and these scumbag fucking doctors who are going along with it were part of it. And it was just this unbelievable 60 minutes piece. Obviously, I have to find the other side to the story, but it was one of those moments where I sat back and I was like, um, we, I don't know if capitalism and health go together, B. <laughs> Real talk, like had to give it so clap there. Yeah, you know, it ex it exposed <laughs> it. Like I want doctors to make tons of money because their job is yeah, so yeah. fucking important. I want them to get paid so much goddamn right, money. You want the best people to be doctors, and I want the best people yeah. to be doctors. And the way you reward that is with a capitalistic Monetary, system, right? Yeah. Monetary gain. Mm -hmm. That being said, when you create a situation like this where it's in people's best interest to make them addicts, yeah, you're just as bad as those drug dealers on the street. Matter of fact, you're worse because those drug dealers in the street know they're coming to get illegal drugs. These people are trusting a fucking doctor to give them something to make them feel better. Yeah. And like, I can't wait wait for the day of reckoning where like the veil is taken dropped, down from taken the pharmaceutical down. industry. Some, it's crazy. I used to work in an oncology they have office. The what do you call that shit in Congress? Like the lobby, the pharmaceutical lobby is like oh, the so fucking it's lobby. It's the most powerful one. It's the one. That's the they fucking. Just, they one. just got money. They got yeah. crazy amounts of money. But you were saying you work. So I used to work in an oncology office, and we had some of like the top oncologists, like top of their Yale, Harvard, all these uh, types of doctors. These motherfuckers, and I knew this was going on. Um, for trial chemo drugs, they were incentivized in that same exact way to get as many of their patients to get on these trial chemo drugs, even though it's it's almost like, I would say 90% of the cases, you see those patients deteriorate faster because these chemo, these trial drugs are so much stronger than the approved chemo drugs that are in place right now. But these guys would get bonuses. They would be at all these speaking arrangements. This motherfucker was getting a million dollars per speaking arrangement. Wow. Son, it's crazy the shit that's going on in the medical system. So crazy. what? So Dude. that's what do you have to say about that? Yeah, because you're yeah. Indian like him. Answer yeah. for your people. Yeah, yeah. answer I mean, no, for your I fucking people. Son. I say this sincerely. If you see an Indian, defund India with an Indian <laughs> last. We already did that with an Indian <laughs> last name. <laughs> <laughs> with an Indian last White name. people originally defunded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, the kings are defunding, yo. <laughs> yeah, defund continents. Got this bitch. <laughs> That's hysterical. Go on, go on. If you see, if an, see Indian. an Indian with an Indian last name and a white first name, do not trust this guy. Bobby Jindal. Bobby Jindal. If you see a fucking William Subram Subramanian or whatever the fuck, nah, bro, you out. I don't trust you at all. He's doing that for white people, and that's not Indian you trust. Mm. Interesting. You out. But so it is you're saying they changed their name or the parents he, named That's them. not his given name. He calls uh, himself that, so you guys trust him more. Mm. It's some bullshit. But in reality, he just wants you to be able to pronounce his name because it's probably hard to pronounce. <laughs> so he manipulates the, uh, <laughs> Keep the way that you pronounce it, right? So he almost changed the whole name. I know the name Kapoor, there's not gonna, it's not going to be that hard. It's going to yeah. be like fucking two syllables. Yeah, but that's really fucked up that he would just change the pronunciation of his name just to like get the masses to be able to accept it more. You know? What? Get it. Why, why are you looking at me? Mark Gagnon. Oh! oh that's how it's pronounced. Oh, shit! That's how it's pronounced. Oh, shit! Oh, how, else, shit. How, else, how else could you pronounce it? What? How else could you pronounce it? Mark Gagnon or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Nah, no, they're saying it wrong. How is it? Gagnon. Son, you just want that shit to be closer to fag, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to make you guys comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it is crazy, man. It really opened my eyes to like the evils what's the of solution? the pharmaceutical system. Is there no way around that in a socialist medical system or like a I think the, Medicare yeah, unfortunately, for all? the solution is an extreme amount of government overreach, and that is going to limit the amount of drugs that we have. But I really think that drugs kind of like are like porn in that like we kind of figured it all out like we've done all the drugs like yeah we need a vaccine for this illness that's out right now yes do we need a vaccine for restless leg syndrome no do we need a million different drugs for 
uh, you're overweight and you don't want to stop eating? No. The drug for you're overweight and you don't want to stop eating is you stop eating. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, why are we creating drugs to enable the problem that you have? So what's interesting is they tried to shut a lot of this down. There's, it just seems like another loophole. And maybe they'll always find loopholes. But I remember my uncle used to get gift cards for everything, fancy dinners all the time. It's payola like with radio. Yep. Only people's lives are at stake. And you can't, there has to be some kind of like monetary cap. Because it seems like it's the pharmaceutical. Like if you kept doctor's salaries high, it would still be a competitive job, I think. If the, if the compensation for a family practice doctor is 350000 a year, all right, I'll do that. If it's a million a year for a neurosurgeon salary, all right, I'll do that. But all these incentives, that's where the problem is. Mm-hmm. If I just get a high-ass salary, I will still want to be a doctor. But all this other shit that you yeah. don't even know about that makes Son. you think I would want to be a doctor, You're that's where you got to cut out. You're so right, also- but don't you also think that like people are naturally greedy, so if there's an opportunity yep. to make more yeah, money, they might still take it. And the problem, I think, is going to be the pharma. I think you got to go with the pharmaceutical But even their that's salaries, they're incentivized the more patients they get. So yeah, like so the, you want to like run through patients, like incentivize them, like oh yeah, you have a retention rate and you are bringing more business to here, you get a bonus. I know, and I don't know what I know that's a thing, and I also think in a social system it will be like we want you to see as few people as possible because we have to pay for all this. This comes out of our pocket every time. Like people are naturally greedy, so what is the solution? Mm. There I is think, an imperfect solution, whatever it is. I think but I don't know what it is. We I think we all acknowledge that there is conflict, right? Yeah, between capitalism and health. Yeah. Right. And it is a really tricky thing. Um, so we have to do something to limit the extremes of capitalism. Yeah. When it comes to health specifically. And I think we usually limit the extremes of capitalism when it comes to like uh, most businesses. Right. You can't have monopolistic practices. Right. right? right. Child labor laws. Child labor laws. Even minimum wage. Like there are things that we put in place here. So we need to have a little bit more. And it's weird for me to even say this, but government overreach on the um, a pharmaceutical company's ability to reward a doctor yeah. for using their drug. Yeah. And it's now, not, that veil's not going to get lifted for decades probably because there's so much other shit that's there that we are dealing with. Yeah. We're not going to look at that for a long time. Hospital administrators are apparently greedy fucks. Like they're not giving their nurses masks and shit like that because it's just like, I'm not, I'm not spending that money. This is, I'm sure you guys can poke holes in the solution, but like what if we gave um detail i know this might be against hipaa but what if we gave analysis of what happened with the patients that that doctor saw not specifically by name but for example 60 percent of diabetes patients that saw this doctor ended up uh you know reducing their diabetes and blah 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 blah. but and then we found out there are certain doctors that were like oh 90 percent of these patients that went and saw for back pain ended up being on oxycontin and being addicted and having yeah. problems They're like oh, okay well i don't want to see that doctor because advanced he prescribes analytics for whom like a third party agency that over like oversees all this yeah like it's almost like a yelp review for doctors but we get to do it based on what they're prescribing and how they're treating those patients so that we could go well shit i want to be with that doctor who he it seems like all his patients not all or 60 percent of his patients end up recovering while this one 20 percent of his patients end up recovering and 80 percent become drug addicts mm. poke not, holes in it i'm trying to think if a private because it would be a private company which is good because if it's a government agency they don't they're lazy by nature government jobs are right you know they don't do shit really uh private company could be incentivized to get it done but like how are they incentivized for them to stay completely moral and transparent? Because then honest? they could be bribed by the... Yeah. yeah. Mark? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Like, that's the other thing with, like, these pharmaceutical companies. You can try to fine them. Like, Johnson & Johnson got fined $500 million. Bruh, this is... Go on. I know where you're going with this, and this is really important people understand. So, go on. So, like, the... the <laughs> this drives me fucking crazy. The Oklahoma yeah. ruling for Johnson & Johnson with their role in the opioid crisis, they were charged $500 million. How much did they make off of the drug? It's difficult to say exactly, but in the... Like, a magnitude of greater than that. Like, in the billions. So, essentially, these drug companies are going... I don't mind if I get fined five hundred million dollars for the drug that may or may not work. If I can make a billion, yeah, mm-hmm. I made five hundred million dollars. I made that's five hundred million less. Yeah, okay, I'll make nine hundred million, nine hundred nine hundred fifty, whatever that fuck that the number yeah. is. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. If you I made five hundred million dollars, right? That's yeah. half, right? So it's like all they have to do is calculate that punishment in. It's sim- It's probably no different than like the banks. Right, They're like yeah. okay, if I sell up the sell these fucked up things and I do this bad shit, uh, if I sell people bad mortgages or you know, yeah, I these lie. people can't pay and I take that loss, but think of all the money I made on interest and whatever. Or even if the SEC finds me, yeah, 
I don't care if they find me because they're not going to find me more than the amount of money I made. Yeah. The punishment has to be greater than the amount of money made. Yeah. It maybe should go to the point where they can't make any money off of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like even this dude, uh, Kapoor. What's his name? John Kapoor. John Kapoor, yeah. yeah. 66 months in jail. How many years is that, Akash? Five, five and a half. I mean. To become a billionaire, you wouldn't do that? Or a hundred millionaire, whatever yeah. the fuck he was worth? And his family keeps a lot of the money. Like, I think you have to And remove- then you're out on good behavior Ooh. and- here it is. And, and also, there's very few people that actually get, like, actually tried. Yeah, That's it's, right. It's hard to catch them. So here's the thing. Maybe we do this. If financial incentive is the reason why they're doing it, right? We have to remove all the financial uh, reward in the punishment for the crime. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now you wouldn't consider doing the crime because you're like, well, I'm not going to do five years and I get no money out of it. Yeah. But I'll do five years and be worth $100 million. Yeah, yeah, but, like, how can you prove that the speaking engagement was payment for giving these meds you can't but you can disincentivize the company that would be hiring the guys to do the speaking engagement engagements if you if they knew that they could get punished and have all their profits removed if the drug ended up being faulty if white collar crimes Mm. punishments were purely like fuck jail time it's all financial and it is heavily penalized financially it might not even be worth it for them because if you got if if your punishment for money laundering is we take all your money I don't know how much you can prove whatever. We just take it all. I don't. I'm sure that's an overcorrection. It's, it's tricky because they can afford the attorneys to. to that's to the fight thing. It, These rules it. won't pass because the people who break the rules are rich and make the rules. So this is all some shit that would never happen. It's a utopian right. idea. This is something that really interesting. Maybe we say this for Patreon because we got to wrap this up. But um, but we just you know put it out there and then go check out Patreon, uh, uh Patreon.com/slash Flagrant Sue. You know, asshole army growing like crazy. Almost at ten. Yeah, we're almost at ten k, man. So we're coming, mm, we coming for him, bro. So let's get up to that ten. If you're listening right now, you fuck with us. Go check out that Patreon, man. And if you don't uh, believe us telling you, go listen to the reviews. Go listen to other asshole army members that fuck with the Patreon. They'll tell you for themselves. But this is a discussion we should have over there. When it comes to cancel culture, and we got a shout out to Miles, the guy, I think it was Miles or Ryan? Miles. Miles brought this up to us. Uh, When it comes to cancel culture, it's really interesting. We do not keep that same energy for the people who commit white collar crime because you can make the argument that they affect way more lives. Oh, yeah. So the people from British Petroleum that fuck up the entire Gulf and you fuck up every one of those shrimp fishermen or any fisherman for that matter. Talk about looting? Shit. Who's really looting? The guy who steals some shit out of a Louis Vuitton store or the fucking guy who built a Louis Vuitton store on stolen money? There we go. It's like you got, you got um, you know, all these like financial dudes, right, who are part of the economic collapse that end up getting bonuses, yeah. that bail down bonuses. There's no jail time whatsoever. You really want to talk about canceling people for the shit that they've done to others? I think we got we to gotta shed some light over at that white collar crime, bro. Mm-hmm. I think they tried. Occupy Wall Street was in that fucking park. For yeah, but they didn't want to riot. They didn't fucking plan, yo. They, they did that peaceful shit. They didn't riot. Uh, they didn't go to JP Morgan and break some fucking windows. Mm, you know what I mean? They didn't go to the banks and shake some shit up. They were pussy. Low, low key, they were pussy. And I genuinely would ask them, what are you guys trying to accomplish? And they would all be like, it's on the website. And I went to the website and there was nothing. You're not asking for anything. Mm. You're just a bunch of white fucking people who are not showering, hanging out outside of Zuccotti Park. <laughs> Which is a great park before you guys got there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, man, we love y'all, man. Come check us this Friday, patreon.com slash flavor two. Uh, make sure you keep it tight and um, don't touch girls. <laughs> Peace.